Live from the Bush Light Studio. Don't ask me if I'm all right. What can you think dominate? And we not doing it. We're going to go get one and celebrate on somebody else's tail. Yeah. Yeah. Bill said you had very motivational words at halftime. It's halftime with Bill Olson and Matt Jones. From the bottom of my toes to the top of my head. I have zero respect for saying no moth at halftime. That's even one racer back. And vintage Matt Jones. One, two, three. Let's get it going. Here we go. Right now, let's take the field Text on the McClarty Daniel Hotline, 877-377-6963. Now, here's Phil Olson and Matt Jones. Doing right now here in uh, Columbia, South Carolina. Good to be with you today. Hi, how's everyone doing? Halftime here on a Friday hear a little echo in my ear if there's something you can do about that. I just uh, noticed that as we started talking here. There we go. Now it's gone. Bill Elson at uh, Founders Park. My friend Matt Jones in our ESPN Arkansas headquarters. We've got Ty Richardson running the controls for now. And I didn't draw the rain turtle. I promise I didn't draw the rain turtle. Uh, but it was raining when I got out of the hotel and got here to the ballpark. But it does look like they're about to pull the tarp. So you shouldn't have any problem getting this game in today as Arkansas opens a series uh, against the Gamecocks. Be a tough place to play. Be a tough team to play, too. Sunday may be a little bit hairy, though. We'll see how that goes. Morning, Matt Jones. A little rainy out here. I think it'll be okay the rest of the day. What's going on outside your window? Beautiful Friday here. Got it going on today. Good. I did not draw the rain turtle. I promise you that. You know what a rain turtle is? Have I ever brought that up with you before? I know who looks like Donatello at the Ninja Turtles, and that's, <laughs> that's Killian right. Mbappe, that OG. I mean, he uh, he doesn't even have to get a Halloween costume. He knows what he's being for Halloween. I remember you mentioned that yesterday about um, Did about you look his, at uh, Did you go look at turtle brother? Yeah. 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 yeah I, well, you know, I'm Leonardo face. already, so it's like he's one of my turtle brothers, you know? Do you carry your house on your back? You can sleep anywhere. I think he could probably sleep anywhere, right, in the middle of a, of a soccer pitch but still wake up to score three goals before anybody's noticed. Does that sound like I know what I'm talking about with soccer? You know, he's uh, he, he, he might look like a turtle, but he's fast like a cheetah. <laughs> well, the rain turtle uh, would be the – now, I don't think I see rain turtles drawn in college ball. Everybody wants to play their games. When you're in minor league baseball – there's something weird about the idea that everybody wants a rain out whenever there's a chance to have one. So you get somebody that, and it's a tradition, we get people that text in about this that have been around the game a long time. If you draw a turtle with a stick in the on the warning track and, 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 and make it look just right, you know, kind of an oval body, four little oval legs, and then a smiley face and something down the middle of what would make it look like a shell, it's supposed to help seed the clouds so that you can get a rain out. I've seen it work probably 55% of the time, uh, but nobody does that in college ball because they want to play, and they do want to play, so they have just pulled the tarp, so that'll be just fine. Um, all right, it is a Friday. First pitch today is coming up at 6 o'clock, and uh, happy golden hour coming up in a couple of hours. Feeling good about that. Do We, are, we have our uh, named assistant coach. Matt for Arkansas basketball. They announced Kenny Payne is going to be not just an assistant, but he will also be the associate head coach uh, coming over after two pretty miserable years at Louisville where you just kind of forget uh, that Louisville used to be a really good program. Um, maybe things will change in the future, uh, but – didn't go very well for him as a head coach. Now he's got an opportunity to uh, return to a role that was successful for him and successful for Cal uh, over the course of, I think it was uh, 12 years uh, with uh, Cal at Kentucky. It was 10 or 12 years. Uh, a few of them as an associate head coach, top recruiter. And I guess this just kind of goes along with the idea that you're going to get a certain kind of talent that maybe you haven't been getting before. Uh, because uh, Payne can Payne can bring him in, that's for sure. 
And uh, a lot of the success that Cal had at Kentucky, I don't know if it's if it's directly related to it. I'm sure it has a lot uh, a lot to do with some of the success, but lack in the postseason recently, who knows? Um, you know, he was there for the national championship. He was there for the Final Fours, and uh, now he's going to be now he's going to be second in command uh, under Cal here at Arkansas. So I guess it's it's really no surprise, um, but it did seem that he had some other options either in the NBA or at Arkansas. So he chose college and he chose the Razorbacks. Let's go, Hogs. I mean, he's uh, he's had success being an assistant before. He's is he kind of like Dwight Schrute, assistant to the regional manager? I don't know if he says some. Well, yeah, there, I guess there were a couple of awkward. I mean, anybody's going to say something awkward on a press conference now and again when you're on television and you're in front of a camera. As much as can happen, yeah. But I remember we played uh, we played a soundbite from him. He was the one. He was. Remember, I forget the name of the kid at Louisville who refused to play in the first half because he didn't have his leggings. You remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we played. We played. Uh, we played Payne's reaction to that, and that they did get him in in the second half. I don't remember if it was with the leggings or not, but he played well. <laughs> and it was. It wasn't about him. It wasn't about Kenny Payne. It was really just about one of those uh, this generation moments. But um, this guy's had a great. I mean, he had a really. He had a. He had a great college career. Uh, won a national title under Denny Crum. Um, first round pick in the NBA. Had uh, I think it was four years in the NBA, and uh, success as as an assistant coach. Just didn't find that as a head coach. So um, I guess it's a return to a familiar role to him. Just uh, instead of wearing blue, be wearing red now. So now the rest of the staff can kind of come together. But that's uh, that's the first of them. I guess I guess we would expect sometime soon you get you get some other announcements about that about the uh, assistant coaching staff. You still just have the one player that's uh, that's announced he's coming to play for the Razorbacks, Big Z. Nobody else yet. So I get back to me. It feels like it's been a little bit of a slower week than anticipated. But at least there's one. I don't know. Maybe I was expecting a little too much as far as. Uh, not, I, I shouldn't say a roster coming together, but more than one player making the announcement or at least making their decision. Because uh, I guess I thought it would be a little more of a trickle, not a stream yet, but one drop is, is what you've got. It's a good drop. I'm assuming there'll be some more players making their decision sometime soon. Yeah, I mean, the, the portal's open, portal's going. They'll uh, They'll start to fall in line here. I anticipate so. Yeah, I mean, Cal said it would take a while that it shouldn't uh, shouldn't uh, be something that is going to come together immediately or just like that. Um, but when Aaron Torres joins us in a little bit, and he'll be on in about five minutes, six minutes or so, he, uh, uh, he I think he's got an understanding of what pain means to the Cal coaching staff, um, and you know, for whatever reason that it didn't work at Louisville. That that goes in that goes into the past. You know, your record as a head coach follows you as a head coach, but when you got a record as an assistant coach, and that includes Final Fours and national titles and number one recruiting classes and big guys that you help get to the NBA, um, that's going to stand more than w- whatever his record was as the as the head coach at Louisville. Well, you and I've talked about plenty of uh, coaches who've been great assistants that didn't work out as head coaches. And then they end up returning back to his a, a assistant, an assistant role or a coordinator role, and you know they're back in a place where they're comfortable and find success again. You know, there's there's a lot of quarterback guys and, and a lot of NFL guys. I, I think of uh, you know Dirk Cutter. He's he's a coach I was around, uh, a li- but you you see it you you see it going on, and and he'll be an OC, and then he'll and, and Dan Enos is a guy like that. You know, he was a, he was a head coach for a little bit, but it's like, no, nah, bro, you're you're in a, not that he can't be a good head coach. You know, it's just like he's better as an OC. Dirk Cutter's better as an OC. Uh, there there's certain coaches that it's just that's kind of the role you are, and there's nothing there's nothing wrong with being an associate head coach. You know, being the the assistant guy, being being the next uh, being what would it be the vice coach. I guess that's the right term. <clears throat> if you're a, a, so, associate is a little is a step ahead of assistant. Um, I think vice. 
That's a, nobody's ever put that so in front in of soccer, a coach's name. That's well, the perfect terminology. Right, in, in soccer, I, the, the, whenever, like, the, the 88 World Cup or United, whatever it is, it's like they call them vice champions. That's the second the second champion. So Does it's, that mean it, they fill in? It's the second. Yeah, you're there. You're second in command. You fill in if, yeah. the, if the original team, if the championship team can't make it to their parade. They might have another game anything. somewhere. Yeah, you know, it's like, hey, come on. Wow, I didn't realize it could actually work that way. Does that make... <clears throat> Does that make uh, the Washington Huskies the vice college football champions? So if, um, if, if Michigan's players can't make it, and I don't remember if there was a visit to the White House yet or not, but let's just say they couldn't make it or whomever couldn't make it, you just going to like sprinkle in guys from Washington, say, well, J.J. McCarthy can't make it. He's getting ready for the draft. Just, just well, no, Michael Penix Jr. spring doing that too, so who knows? You could just drop somebody in there. To replace him, I like this idea. Maybe even the vice champion Iowa Hawkeyes can go to the White House. <laughs> you know, maybe they can do a dual citizenship, and South Carolina can go too. Sounds to me like they would uh, probably rather have uh, Caitlin Clark there anyway. Yeah, send them all there. Send them all <laughs> vice champions. I like that. Bench coach is really a vice coach in baseball. That would be the next guy up usually uh, to make all those decisions. That's outstanding. That makes co-hosts vice hosts. Hmm. We could really take this as far as I, as far as I possibly can. Uh, all right, halftime for this Friday includes the golden hour starting at at one o'clock. I'm all screwed up now because I'm on Eastern time. <laughs> totally screwed. One hour, if for some reason, will be more difficult for me to figure out than if if we were in Los Angeles or something on Pacific time, and it's two hours. So uh, yeah, uh, one fifteen. Neil Adkinson from Ben Sarazen. James Teague from the Teague Law Firm in about an hour to get around on this Arkansas baseball series and to celebrate Hagen Smith Day properly. And in just a moment, we're calling up Aaron Torres to react to Kenny Payne's hire, uh, hiring at Arkansas. And, oh, yes, the rumors that Jerry Jones is going to be buying Arkansas basketball players for the program. Stay tuned. Halftime back in a moment. This is Halftime. Baseball in Arkansas, it's just different. The atmosphere the fans, the hope for something greater. All that preseason noise. Don't make it to every year they're disappointed. Block it out. And when those lights come on, we'll be ready. It's baseball season in Arkansas. This is our time. This is baseball. Listen to every Razorback baseball game on ESPN 95.3 and hit that line.com. After I drop the kids off, I have to run across town for a meeting, hit the gym during lunch, Jake has soccer tonight, and Emily has gymnastics? Oh, did I turn on the crock pot this morning? <laughs> with a never-ending to-do list, it's easy to forget something important, like setting up a life insurance plan with Shelter Insurance. Your local shelter agent can show you how to create a safety net for your family. Shelter Life Insurance Company, Columbia, Missouri. Call Jason Hill in Greenwood or Wade Gilkey in Fort Smith. Greenwood Collision has been a part of Greenwood since the opening in 2007. Now they invite you in to their new state-of-the-art facility. They offer customers a lifetime warranty and work diligently with all insurance companies to better serve their customers. Greenwood Collision has a color matching system guaranteed an exact color match each and every time. Stop the worrying. Call Chris or Joe today at 996-9922. Greenwood Collision, 2615 West Center in Greenwood. If you are involved in a divorce or custody case, you want an attorney you can trust to guide you through the process. The attorneys at Hickey & Hole Law Partners have over seven decades of combined experience. Hickey & Hole have seen and heard nearly every scenario you can imagine, ready to put that experience to work for you to get the best results. Visit KevinHickeyLaw.com or give them a call today, 479-434-2414. Hickey & Hole Law Partners, things are about to get better. Harry Robinson Salas All Ford wants to buy or trade for your vehicle today, and they will give you top dollar. Pre-owned car values are at historic all-time highs, and your car today is worth more than it ever will be again. If you are driving a 2013 model or newer with 120,000 miles or less, bring it to Harry Robinson Salas All Ford, and they'll give you more than any other dealer. Even if you don't want to buy a new car, they'll still buy yours. Harry Robinson Salas All Ford, one mile south of exit 308 off 540 in Salas All. Hi there, I'm Sarah, and I just had to share my experience with Mosquito Joe. See, I used to dread spending time outdoors because of those pesky mosquitoes. They would always find me and ruin the fun. I would soak my daughter with bug spray, which hardly ever worked. It was awful. I finally called Mosquito Joe, and wow, it has been quite a game changer. 
They implemented an eco-friendly mosquito control plan customized especially for my yard. Now I can enjoy my backyard without constantly swatting at bugs and reapplying button spray every 10 minutes. Visit arkansas.mosquitojoe.com. Your home is your biggest asset, so when you decide to add a sunroom, a patio cover, a new driveway, or new windows, you need to call a company you can trust. Sawyer's has been part of your community for over 30 years. They're insured, licensed, and have 100% financing for all of their products. Take all the worry out of your next project. Call Sawyer's and let them handle it from permitting to completion. Sawyer's, serving the River Valley in northwest Arkansas with a full showroom located in Fort Smith or online at sawyers-sunrooms.com. Colorworks Paint and Body in Barling offers professional automotive painting, bodywork, and fabrication that is unsurpassed in talent and dedication. Owner Andy Harrod uses the latest in collision repair technology to ensure all damage is addressed, whether it's visible or hidden, and works with all insurance companies. Andy and his crew have the experience and commitment to give you complete trust in the repair of your vehicle, no matter the size of the job. Colorworks is located at 1206 Fort Street in Barling, across from Dollar General, and is on Facebook, where you can check out their work. Your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN 953. <laughs> Find halftime on 99.5 in Northwest Arkansas, 95.3 in Fort Smith in the River Valley, 96.3 in Hot Springs in Central Arkansas, 104.3 in Harrison and Mountain Home, and everywhere on HitThatLine.com. Join the conversation. Call or text ESPN Arkansas on the McClarty Daniel Hotline, 877-377-6963. Now back to the hosts. Here's Phil Elson and Matt Jones. All guests join us on the McClarty Daniel Hotline. Aaron Torres is there from the Aaron Torres Sports Podcast and from Fox Sports Radio. It's always good to talk with AT today. And uh, I would like to say that things simmered down a little bit after all of the coaching carousel stuff in college basketball, Aaron. But you know that's never going to be the case. Uh, portals open. It's been a wild week. And um, apparently, uh, if you believe the rumors, Jerry Jones is going to be buying Arkansas a basketball team. Wow. Yeah, I saw that. Um, I don't, you know, I've, I've heard that it's a little bit overblown. Um, you know, I've heard that it's, uh, you know, he's willing to make a, you know, sizable donation to help the team. I don't know that, um, you know, he's calling up five stars and saying, Hey, what are they offering you? Uh, let's add a zero to it. I, I think he's a little busy, you know, running the most, uh, powerful franchise in North American sports, uh, to, you know, be calling up Carter Knox and, and uh, Boogie Flan. But, you know, maybe I'm wrong on that. But, yeah, no, it's, it's been a crazy week. Um, you know, I know for Arkansas fans, maybe even a little bit too quiet. I know, actually, frankly, Kentucky fans feel the same way. But it's funny, you know, I, I was putting together some notes this morning. Um, Dalton Connect, I looked it up did not commit last year until April 21st. You know, Cam Spencer, a crucial part of UConn's championship team, didn't commit until June. Grant Nelson didn't commit to BAM until June. Bring it up because I, I know Arkansas fans are a little, you know, uh, 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 wanting more news in a faster manner, but there's plenty to come and um, everything's going to be okay. Hey, Aaron, I, I liked uh, number five, Castle from, from UConn. Uh, he yeah. he, he kind of reminded me a little bit of Marcus Smart when he was at Oklahoma State. Um, mm, I, I like that comp. You know, Justice, Justice Winslow was a beast at Duke. Now, I think he might be a little bigger, but yeah, closer to Marcus Smart. I was, man, I, whenever everything was going down, I was like, try to get that guy in the portal. How, do you think he's ready to, to make this jump to the NBA, or do you think the NIL would help him stay 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 in school for another year? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's funny, uh, Matt, because this kind of conversation came up with Reed Shepard uh, yesterday uh, when he declared from Kentucky, which is, um, which is that, you know, listen, I, I think that NIL is a great uh, thing that has come to college sports in terms of retaining players in college basketball. But when you're going to be a top 10 pick and Steph Castle is going to be a top 10 pick, um, you know, you're talking about a four-year guaranteed contract at, at probably four or five million dollars a year, depending on where you go. You know, anywhere between I think probably 
you know, 20 and 40 million, depending on where you go in the lottery. So um, he was a great Husky. I think it was always presumed that he was going to be a one and done. Um, and obviously, <laughs> let me let me even take it a step further. Not only was it presumed he was going to be a one and done, there was a moment in time during the season where one of ESPN's draft analysts started to wonder, hey, would a, would a, a, a second year of college basketball behoove him? Is he really ready? Has he regressed? And Dan Hurley at a press conference called the guy out and was like, if you don't think this guy is improving rapidly and is ready for the NBA, you don't know basketball or something like that. So the plan was always to be one and done. Um, You know, Dan Hurley would never uh, rush it or anything like that. Um, But, uh, yeah, no, it's no surprise to UConn fans, and obviously UConn fans are excited and wish him nothing but the best uh, in his uh, next adventure. It wasn't always the plan for Shepard to be one and done, was it? I mean, no. I mean, he look. I mean, I guess I'm not surprised because it looked like he can really, really score. But I don't know if that was an expectation when the season started. No, there's no doubt. No, no, no. And that that's one of the things. You know, I mean, I think there's a lot of revisionist history in this world. Um, but nobody thought he was he was going to be a one and done. I mean, listen, there, there was talk of is he even going to get on the floor this year with with how DJ Wagner was coming out of high school. And, uh, you know, Dillingham was highly rated. And even Antonio Reeves, I don't think anybody thought he'd quite have the sophomore or the senior year that he did this year. But, no, I don't think nobody thought that. I mean, it's one of the great stories. I I still think, you know, it would have been cool. You know, his father, obviously, you know, not only won a national championship at Kentucky, but, you know, he did it for a first-year head coach in 1998 under Tubby Smith. And, you know, thought it would be cool, you know, playing for his dad's former teammate, could it happen? Would it happen? Should it happen? Would he be the face of kind of the next generation? But, you know, I've said on my show all week is that the further that we got away from that Mark Pope press conference on Sunday uh, afternoon, you know, I thought there was a moment there where, you know, maybe he makes an announcement there and you really kind of rally the troops and all that. The further you got away from um, from that press conference, I think the, more, the less likely it became. It becomes official yesterday. Let me ask you guys a question. I want to ask you guys a quick question. And, um, you know, you, Phil or whoever starts, but do, does your audience get mad, like, when you guys are talking about Kentucky? And I only bring it up because – I, the, the two programs right now are so intertwined with the players they're recruiting. You know, Kenny Payne gets hired. There's talk about other staff members coming, going, staying in Kentucky, whatever. And I don't know, you know, like, like it seems like Kentucky fans are more like, we're over Calipari, stop talking about him. Where it's like, I think Arkansas fans have a better understanding of like, hey, for the foreseeable future, these two programs are intertwined. I'm just curious if you guys have gotten pushback if you're talking, you know, too much sort of about Kentucky just because of the, the, the Calipari uh, parallels. No, I haven't I haven't felt that at all. I think that it's understood that this is part of the yeah. story, that, that one leads yeah. to the other. I'll put it in these terms, though, just to compare the two fan bases. And I, I see a lot of that reaction. On, on social media from Kentucky fans, but I don't really see a lot of uh, reaction from Arkansas fans about anything going on at Southern California with Muss. You know what I mean? I mean, it maybe yeah. it's because it's different leagues, but um, let's put it, how to put it in these ways. Um, Arkansas is more in Kentucky's fans' domes than Southern <laughs> California fans are in Arkansas fans' domes. Probably the right way to put it. No, a hundred percent. And, and it's, it's crazy. You know, I mean, coach Moss had to do what was best for him and his family. And, you know, the one thing I keep saying, and, and, you know, I think it's easy because you got Calipari to more appreciate Moss. You know, I mean, if Moss left and, you know, you end up with some mid-major guy that nobody's heard of and nobody believes in, that's one thing, but I will say, you know, I, I hope in time, Arkansas fans can appreciate, I keep saying, you know, Musk kind of woke up that sleeping giant and now it's on Cal. He's being paid a lot of money to take it to that final level, that next level, whatever. Um, but, uh, uh, um, you know, I think Musk deserves a lot of credit for, for making this program as attractive as it is. Uh, fan base, it goes without saying. Uh, uh, boosters and NIL support, it goes without saying. But, you know, if, if there was no Musk, I don't know if there'd be a John Calipari, but it is kind of crazy, you know. Uh, it just feels like you know, we spent three, four, five weeks, you know, what's his future? What's next for him? Um, and then, you know, Calipari comes in, swooshes in, and it's such a big story, and there's so much interest um, that it's, 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 it's easy to forget everything that was accomplished there. Hey, Aaron, Kenny Payne being the, the, the associate head coach here at Arkansas, what is his superpower? What is his specialty? You know, what does he really bring? Is it recruiting? Is it defensive? Is it offense? What does he bring to the table for these Razorbacks? 
I think it's two things, you know, and first of all, um, you know, the, the, the head coaching stuff, listen, not everybody is built for every job. And I don't think because, um, he was an unsuccessful head coach. It doesn't mean he won't and isn't a great assistant coach. And so the two things are, are things I think the first one, certainly everybody knows, very deep recruiting ties. Um, you know, even at Louisville, I mean, you know, Carter Knox, you know, they made their final, you know, Louisville made his final cut in, 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 in during a disappointing year. DJ Wagner, he was in the mix. And, you know, he's a guy like all great recruiters, has great relationships, has been around the sport. Um, and I do think he is going to help Cal build a championship caliber roster every year, just like they did at, at, at Kentucky. Uh, I also think beyond that, um, you know, he is known as kind of the big man whisperer. And I know, you know, we're kind of transitioning out of the, the back to the basket center and all of that. But I mean, you can go and look up, you know, Carl Anthony Towns, Willie Cauley Stein, you know, all those great big men. I, I, I think, Anthony Davis, too. You know, Anthony Davis was kind of the first year maybe of the Kenny Payne uh, time at Kentucky. So I don't remember Anthony Davis as much. But but you go Carl Anthony Towns and Erlens Noel, Willie Cauley-Stein, they all give Kenny Payne credit for their development into the players that they are now. So I think he's great with big men behind the scenes, and he's a great recruiter. And I don't think that just because he was unsuccessful as a head coach doesn't mean that he can't continue to be those things uh, for John Calipari at Arkansas. And listen, we know that people, that other people believe that he can because we know that Mark Pope was trying to get him at, at, at Kentucky, and we know that some NBA opportunities were out there for him as well. So, again, no, I'm re- repeating myself, but I don't think um, any fan should be worried about his time as a head coach. I think he's probably built to be an elite A++ assistant, and I think that's what Arkansas is getting. But was was there something that he brought to the program that was lacking in the last four years or five years where there hasn't been postseason success? I mean, we focus so much on the idea that uh, you got to win in March, and in Kentucky you got to yeah. win in March. But, uh, they, look, they had a really bad year a few years ago. Outside of that, they, they still continued to win. And, and this year at a fairly high level in the regular season. So, I mean, was there something lacking with him not on the staff there that, that he brings? Well, I'll tell you, you know, there was a stretch where a lot of Kentucky fans really kind of sat there and said, like, hey, you know, we haven't been the same since Kenny Payne left. And now, you know, 2022, they start to figure it out. But I do think, Phil, you know, from people that were in that program – I do think that there is kind of – he's kind of the good cop to Calipari's bad cop. And, and, and you know, maybe over the last year or two, Chin Coleman and, and, and Orlando Antigua kind of helped fill that role. But I think there's something to it. Listen, John Calipari, you know, we could criticize the March, you know, disappointments. But, again, second in the SEC this year. They were a two-seed in the NCAA tournament in 2022. So they have had recent high-level success – Um, and it's because he's a guy that's going to coach you really hard. And, I mean, he's one of the last guys from that previous era. He's going to be on you for 40 minutes, and he's going to be on you in practice. And so I only bring it up because I do think there is an element of the good cop, bad cop, where it's like sometimes, you know, as hard as Cal rides, you need that guy to come in and put your arm around you and say, you know what, Um, this guy's tough, but, but look at all the success he's had. This is all in your best interest. So I think it's a great question, Phil. And and, and I think there is something to that of the the tournament success has not been there in the post Kenny Payne world. Um, and I'm not saying he's the only reason or this or that. Um, but I do think there's something too probably plays a very important role behind the scenes kind of with the players. Um, you know, when John Calipari's tough on them, having an arm around that shoulder. AT, let's leave it there. Appreciate you. Have a have a good show and a great weekend, and we'll reconvene Friday next week. Okay. See if Arkansas is more than one player. <laughs> I would expect it. Maybe just two. Maybe just two. Saren Torres with us here on the McClarty Daniel Hotline. Uh, we can open up that hotline for you as well right now at 877-377-6963. And remember, the best Tex-Mex and better service at Joe's Grilling Cantina right now. Fajita Friday features charbroiled steak and chicken tender, full of flavor, comes with the extras. Tomorrow's endless enchiladas, Joe's homemade enchilada sauce. That's all the beef and chicken enchiladas you can eat. Joe's Grilling Cantina, great Tex-Mex and better service. 3400 South 74th, right across from Harps. Joe'sFortSmith.com to get an order in as well. Stay with us. Halftime is back in just a moment. This is Halftime. 
You cannot download our new app in the iTunes or Google Play Store. Listen anytime and anywhere on your favorite mobile device. Just search Hit That Line now. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential. But finding those people can be a major hassle. Unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. You're listening to Halftime Live from the Crabtree RV Center Studios. Crabtree RV Center, where RVing is life. It's spring cleaning sell time at Jelco Outdoors. Savings from 50 to 75% off on select clothing, footwear, hunting and fishing equipment, casual clothing, hunting clothing, work clothing for men, women, and children, work boots, safety shoes, western boots, all 50 to 75% off. Rods, rails, baits, hunting equipment, all 50 to 75% off. Select group of handguns, rifles, and shotguns in the firearms department at cost or below. Don't miss the big spring cleaning sell at Jelco Outdoors in Fort Smith. Can you explain the infield fly rule? Neither can I, but I can help you navigate a variety of legal issues from divorce to personal injury to estate planning. I'm Jackie Mock with Mock Legal Solutions, a new law firm offering affordable flat fees with payment plans available. You get an ace at the price of a minor leaguer. Now that sounds like a grand slam to me. Call Mock Legal Solutions for your free consultation. 479-769-1505. Real advice, reasonable price. Do you need gutters but think they're too expensive or that you need to get the soffit or fascia ready? No worries. Call the gutter guy. He does it all. No need to call multiple companies to get the right gutters for your home. Call the gutter guy. Quality, low maintenance, leaf-free gutters with a five-year warranty. The gutter guy also does vinyl siding and windows. The gutter guy. Over 30 years experience. Call 226-1259. Call the gutter guy. Clogs? Nobody wants a clog. West Arc Plumbing knows that clogs are a serious issue. They can signal that bigger problems are on the way. So contact West Arc Plumbing while the problem is small. Slow shower and sink drain, gurgling toilets and outside cleanouts making a mess? Call 479-646-5151 today. West Arc Plumbing and expert drain cleaning since 1993. They keep you flowing. If you have slow drains or high water bills, call West Arc Plumbing and expert drain cleaning service. 646-5151. Flu vaccines, both regular and high dose for seniors, are now available at Law's Drug Store in Fort Smith. Call 452-6116 to schedule your shot appointment. Usually there is no cost when covered by your insurance. Law's Drug has COVID vaccines, RSV vaccines for ages 60 plus. Pneumonia and tetanus shots are also available. Law's Drug Store, 6802 Rogers Avenue behind Outback Steakhouse. Law's Drug Store, open six days a week to safely care for you and your family. Hey, it's Ty Richardson for Papa's Pub and Pizzeria. I want to talk about their pizza today. The Goob Special with extra pepperoni and rib rub on top. The Parm Special with double mushroom and jalapenos. Don't forget about the bacon cheeseburger and everyone's favorite, the old trash can. Swing on by Papa's Pub and Pizzeria at 508 Garrison Avenue in downtown Fort Smith. Or give them a call at 479-783-9941. Papa's Pub and Pizzeria, the best darn pizza in Fort Smith, perhaps the world. Your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN 95.3. You're listening to Halftime with Phil Elson and Matt Jones. Want to jump in the conversation? Call or text ESPN Arkansas on the McClarty Daniel Hotline, 877-377-6963. Now, here's Phil Olson and Matt Jones. Those guys are veteran hitters, and they and they all have power, too. You know, it's not like 
They're just hit for an average. You're getting on base, slapping it all over the place. They're hitting the ball over your head. You have to. They're they're all dangerous. So you know you can't really look past one to get to the other. You know, obviously we haven't seen them in person. Just watching video and watching some live games when they're playing, and then going off of of, of what we know about them from playing them last year. So we'll revisit all that stuff starting tonight and tomorrow. And we'll get out of town and work on them on Thursday as well and Friday morning before we play. Steven Horn on this year's South Carolina Gamecocks, a team that Arkansas uh, swept last year, Mother's Day weekend. <clears throat> there are some uh, certainly some familiar names. Bit of an older team. Um, uh, they they definitely been around for a while. You got some fifth year seniors on this uh, in this lineup. Uh, you got uh, one of the top freshmen from last year, Ethan Petrie, that's having himself a great second season. One of the better catchers in the league. It's a team that walks a lot. It's a team that strikes out a lot, and they certainly do have a little bit of power as well, as you hear Dave mention, which makes it a little bit of an immovable force against the, uh, uh, what is it, the Im the immovable object <coughs> against the uh, irresistible force, I think, is the one that you're supposed to do. Hogs have, uh, I, I'm pretty sure that they've allowed the fewest home runs in the country this year. They have allowed 28 home runs in 37 games. South Carolina's at 24 homers just in the 15 SEC games, and they strike out a lot. So for them, it may be one of those all-or-nothing games today. And they, so the term pitch off, as you know, when you don't throw your ace against the opponent uh, that you that you usually be throwing. Um, it's throw not, your vice. You throw your vice ace. Well, that's not, <laughs> we got a theme for the show here now. Vice, perfect word, numerous meanings as well. This would be second in command today instead of the things that you enjoy that make you feel a little bit bad about yourself. <laughs> Their ace is Eli Jones, Matt. He's a he's a left hander. He's three and one with a three fifty seven. He's pretty good. Pretty good. Not overpowering, but I think he gets plenty of ground balls, throws a lot of strikes, and he's gonna pitch tomorrow instead. He usually would pitch today. Well, it's in, in Phil, it's it's sports psychology 101. You know, you call the pitcher in that's your B pitcher, your vice pitcher, and it's like, hey, man, we're going to give you a chance to go against their ace. You know, let's see what you got. I believe in you. You know, you, it's all the things you do, uh, and and then you're, 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 you're giving him confidence and you're giving him a chance, whoever the vice, whoever the second in command is, you know. So it's it's a pretty cool thing. It just depends on how the managers handle it. That's how I would handle it. You got to think, you know, how hey, this is an opportunity to go against this guy that's going to get drafted. What, what do you, what are you thinking? He's going to be a first round pick in Hagen oh, Smith, might, right? He, right now, it looks like he's top ten. They're all yeah. watching. Make him look at you too. You know, whatever you got to say to 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 get you going and get you in the mood. Well, truly, I mean, there there is a little bit of truth to that because the scouts that are here to watch Hagen Smith today are they're also here to watch other players. They might be here to watch uh, Roman Kimball who's going to get the start instead for South Carolina. Um, and so it is a chance for him to kind of show out in that case. The trick here for Kimball is that he can't walk any. He can't. This is a pitcher that is a real risk for South Carolina to throw at any time. Obviously, he's got great stuff, batters it under 170 against him, but he's got more walks than innings pitched. So you get a guy right now like Hagen Smith who is, who is who's pinpointing, close to pinpointing, Almost every pitch he can throw. I mean, he is he is pinpointing fastball, two different breaking pitches, and a changeup. I mean, that's what's making him so difficult is that he doesn't just throw four different pitches, but he can command those pitches. Um, Becker's a guy that looks like he could walk the world if you give him a chance. And I think what Kingston is trying to do, and he would said this on his press conference the other day, um, it's a chance to rest the bullpen the second day, which is a different way that you, you would view issues? With, that you would view Arkansas throwing Hagen Smith on a Friday, where <laughs> you know he's hopefully going to give you six to seven innings, and maybe you want the same from Molina tomorrow and the same from Brady Taggart on Sunday. But the idea is that you probably your bullpen probably throw more innings Saturday and Sunday combined. What Kingston's trying to do is to is to split it. Because I don't think they have as many pitchers that they can trust. In fact, their league ERA is 630. That's over three runs higher than their non-conference ERA. Like Arkansas's ERA is actually, I think, a little bit lower against the SEC than it has been against non-conference teams. So, I mean, that's a telling stat. So they're trying to rest their bullpen Saturday. They're going to throw a lot of relievers today. Uh, and then I think they, they don't even know who they're going to start on Sunday. So it'll be... 
probably a few relievers that get in there. Maybe there's some of the same guys that pitch today. So I think that's also one reason why he's made that change. Vice pitcher, again, these nobody ever uses the term vice when it comes to sports unless it's front office stuff. Vice chairman, uh, vice president of, uh, of, uh, of baseball operations or vice president of football operations. Never comes down to the field. You know, then it's always assistant. There's never been an assistant president. It's always a vice president, but I can definitely get with vice pitcher. 877-377-6963 for calls and texts on the McClarty Daniel hotline. Uh, Kevin Hickey asks, What's, uh, with Mo- what happened with Moline? Nothing happened with Moline. He's pitching. He's throwing, he's throwing tomorrow. Uh, that's, that's, that's the plan as far as I know. I haven't heard anything differently than that. So Molina tomorrow and then uh, Tigert on Sunday. And I'd, I'd pay attention a little bit to the idea of maybe they'd have to make the decision pretty soon. But Sunday looks like it could rain all day uh, here in Columbia. Tomorrow's weather is good. Uh, There's no guarantee you can play Sunday. Um, and you got to get out of town um, and you'll have a travel curfew. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some announcement today that, of a doubleheader tomorrow. I'm not saying that with any inside knowledge. Uh, I just, <laughs> they, you got to get these games in. I'm sure Carolina looks at it that way and they'd rather have a third opening. They'd rather play on Sunday, but something tells me that you may end up playing two tomorrow. We had a there is a doubleheader today in the SEC and that is Alabama and A and M. They got rained out yesterday. There was a game that did get played yesterday in Nashville. Vanderbilt beat Florida ten to five, but I, I was hitting here on on Florida's first baseman Jack Caglinone hit a home run for the eighth consecutive game. Uh, I don't I don't know of a streak of that long. I'm sure there's been a streak that long in college baseball. I think the longest streak in Major League Baseball is it's either seven or eight. And I think Griffey, I think Ken Griffey set the record. Uh, Dale Long had set it first. Mattingly may have been in there as well. But that's amazing. They hit a home run in eight consecutive games. Because they're, they're doing their absolute, think about that. They're, they're, they're trying their absolute best to not give you something to hit, and yet he still gets something to hit and, and doesn't miss it for eight consecutive games. One of those two, Matt, I think one of these home runs, I'd seen it a replay on, on, on Twitter. I don't remember if it was Wednesday. I think it was Tuesday. He hit a ball that went over 540 feet. That's out in every ballpark. That's out in Yellowstone. Because I was thinking, I was thinking Griffey Jr. I remember that was in the 90s when when he said that. That was before he went to the Reds. Uh, he he was still out there in the Kingdom, right in in Seattle. And I was going to yeah. ask you, Phil. What would have been, I mean, how many other parks? Could could Griffey have set the record? Could Griffey uh, uh, beat Bonds if he played in a different park uh, all those years he played out in that big, massive park in Seattle? Like, mm. if he would have played in, in Chicago or if he would have played in, in Colorado, trying to think of some short porches um, that, for him. That, I think the thing that got Griffey more than anything was just was injuries. His back. Yeah, he, he got had, injured for a little bit. He had wrist injuries. I remember because he was such a... I mean, he was such a great center fielder, but he was fearless at the fence. And sometimes that, you know, that uh, that pays negative dig- dividends. Uh, I remember him breaking a wrist, chasing a ball into the outfield fence. Bonds, I don't, I don't remember any any injuries that really cost him all that much time. Uh, not with the Pirates, not with the Giants. Well, he was on the right juice. That's he the, had certain that's the things difference. that might have helped keep him healthy. <laughs> See, I think that's a difference because I don't think Griffey is on any of those lists. Anything that ever came up with any type of HGH, Androstein, uh, Griffey's name's not associated with that. Well, Griffey had a few things going for him. For one, he had the right. He had good bloodlines. Two, um, he had the, the prettiest swing maybe in the history of the sport. Three, he had that booty power. You know, I mean, you ever, the I mean, Serena, ever, yeah, the Pat yeah. Bradley, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you ever see, you remember standing Griffey standing there and look at a profile of him, it's like, all right, here going down the bat. Oh my God, that Ron that. Gant, yeah, that's yeah. right. He had that booty power. Uh, by the way, the record is eight in Major League Baseball. Dale, it's like one of these. It's like the old Sesame Street. One of these things is not like the other. Dale Long, Don Mattingly, and Ken Griffey Jr. Griffey did it in '93, so you're right. He did it in the Kingdom. Mattingly did it in 87. 87 was a weird year because there there must there must have been something up with the ball that year. Home run when you look at the difference between home runs in 1986 
87 and 88. It's it's like all right. Didn't they change every... the mound after that? Is, no, that... no, they didn't yeah. change the mound that year. It was there was something that there was something that happened with the balls that year. Either that or everybody was on steroids for one year and then stopped using because <laughs> there were an incredible amount of home runs that one year. And that's the year Mattingly had seven in a row. Dale Long, nobody knows who Dale Long was. He was like a backup catcher with Pittsburgh in '56. That caught. He's got the fire. name for it though. He sure does. Uh, yeah, more, much more so than Mattingly or Griffey as far as those names are concerned. Let's go to the McClarty Daniel hotline. Eduardo was fired up this morning about Arkansas baseball, and he is hiking up the mountain right now. What's going on, Eduardo? How are you? Man, it's in Chewbacca. A bolt of electricity run through my body right now. That's exactly what this fan base needed after our football season. and certainly how things have turned out in our basketball, but suddenly, like a lightning bolt, a hundred-year check, and you know, Mr. Thompson, they hit a home run. You know, I, I have a good feeling. You know, when you talk about electricity you, uh, and running through your body, it's only running through our body this basketball season. I, I can't wait. But more importantly, what's going to take place tonight, Phil, on that mound? I can't. I went to my own jukebox and I cranked up for the Georgia line. You know what, mate? And two of their big songs, and one of them was "This Is How We Roll." And I woke suddenly. This morning, I can hear the whistle blowing and steam as we roll in the Founders Park. And you you talk, you just touched on it with Mr. Hagen Smith. You know, it's, it's a shine on tonight, Hagen. Uh, throw, throw your arsenal at them. Throw your curveball, your fastball, your slider, and throw a big ball. I'll pick your mojo at them while you're at it. Well, you got to be careful if you throw a bowl at somebody from the pitcher's mound, they may call you for a balk. And, Eduardo, i gotta, I got to take issue for a moment here. You have brought up some of my favorite bands of all time, the Eagles. You've brought up David Bowie. He's talked about ZZ Top, Fleetwood Mac. He's He brought up Tupac. Did you just bring up Florida Georgia Line? Eddie, we got to do better than that, Eddie. I know you can do better than Florida Georgia Line. We're going to tell you what. This is how we roll, sir. And I tell you what, I can't think of a better song. You know, if we win this game tonight against two heavy, doesn't get any better for a Friday night. I mean, when you talk about baseball, two heavyweights in the SEC going head to head. You know, their bats against our pitching, and I'm going with our pitching. And Mr. Smith, get your shot on because you can do it. And you know, shut him down. He I knows can't he can. Wait. But trust me, he knows he can do it, Eddie. But all that stuff may be very true. But I just, I'm, I'm, I'm just a little disappointed. He said Florida Georgia Line. He's brought up so many great moments as far as music is concerned on this show. Hmm. We need a vice Eduardo for a quick moment. Somebody that, somebody that actually sends me a band that is that I can listen to. Matt, help me out here. I, yeah, I don't know Florida Georgia Line. I couldn't tell you a single one of their songs. <laughs> um, You'd know it if you heard it because yeah. they also. I'll sound the same. 877-377-6963 is our McClarty Daniel Hop. I think in that same vein, uh, Phil, I saw your boy, uh, Morgan Wallen, threw a chair off a balcony. Uh, he was uh, going, you know, the Olympics are coming up. He was trying out for some new sport, I guess. it was Singing uh, and chair throwing off of balconies. It was frat boy party party life, yeah. Oh, gosh almighty. Yeah, Let, uh, we'll, we'll just take a quick break. I'm going to go brush my teeth. I'll be right back after this. <laughs> This is halftime. You will never find a boring old burger at Art's Barbecue and Burgers in Fort Smith. Try the Wild West Burger, topped with a hot link, jalapenos, and Art's Hot Sauce. The Brisket Burger, with tender brisket and caramelized onions, on top of their hand patted burger. Or the famous Art Attack, with house bacon, smoked ham, and onion ring in a fried egg. There are 10 different burgers to choose from, and they're all $1 off every Saturday. Art's Barbecue Burgers and more. Rogers Avenue, next to Buddy's in Fort Smith. With everyday low prices on top brands, locally owned Jaeger's Ace Hardware is committed to offering real service with real savings. Get these red hot buys at any of our four locations. Save $90 on the DeWalt 20 volt max trimmer and blower kit. Only $199 with your Ace Rewards card. Riazicide 10 pound granules, ready to spray or concentrate, is $799 with Ace Rewards. And buy batteries and chargers and get the tool free on select DeWalt, Milwaukee, and Craftsman Power Tools. Find us online at Jaeger'sHardware.com. 
Hello, this is Sebastian County Assessor Zach Johnson here to remind you to assess your personal property by May 31st to avoid late penalty. You can do this in person at one of our three locations, over the phone, or online by going to www.countyservice.net. I would also like to remind any current homeowners or individuals buying their homes on contract to contact our office and check on your eligibility for the Homestead Tax Credit. Contact us today to see if you qualify. The Homestead Tax Credit can save you up to $425 off of your tax bill. This ad sponsored by Sebastian County Assessor and paid for by Amendment 7. Remodeling your bathroom? Don't let your imagination be limited by out-of-the-box shower doors or tub enclosures. Arkansas Glass and Mirror is your local source for all things glass, including plexiglass, mirrors, and shower doors since 1964. Arkansas Glass and Mirror has more selections, better prices, and the experience to help you build the shower of your dreams. They also have the only showroom in the area to help you create those dreams. Professional installation and professional service. Only at Arkansas Glass and Mirror, 1316 South Zero, Fort Smith, or online at ArkansasGlassAndMirror.com. I know we're always on the go, heading to Fayetteville, Little Rock, Oklahoma City, and you need a place to fill up. But not just for gas. I need snacks, drinks, and a restroom that doesn't make me throw up. That's why my new favorite pit stop is Jam Bar Number 10, located at 6201 Grand Avenue on the way out of town. I can't stop by without getting something from their hot box or a fresh made burger. That's Jam Bar Number 10, located at 6201 Grand Avenue in Fort Smith. Looking for a change? For a limited time, we're offering up to a $15,000 hiring bonus and a $3,000 referral bonus for maintenance tax, including electricians and refrigeration tax. Ask a friend who works at Simmons for more information, and you can both win. Simmons offers vacation matching, a 401k plan, and premium health care for team members and their families through our care clinics at no additional cost. Learn more at worketsimmons.com or stop by the Fort Smith City Hiring Center at 4900 Rogers Avenue, Suite 103 in Fort Smith. Find out more about the $15,000 hiring bonus and start getting paid sooner with same-day hiring options. We look forward to seeing you. Precision Overhead Door features the finest quality materials, installation, and service for all of your overhead door needs. Fully licensed and insured with the largest showroom in Northwest Arkansas, located at 1907 Town West Drive in Rogers and 416 North 10th Street in Fort Smith. Give them a call today at 844-PDS-DOOR or online at precisiondoornwa.com. Financing is available. Precision Overhead Door voted Best Garage Door Company of Northwest Arkansas and the River Valley. Precision Overhead Door. The tires on your vehicle go round and round, but when they don't, go to Van Alma Tire. They have tires in their name. That's their specialty. Van Alma Tire is all about tires. They have all the name brands and private labels available for you and in stock. So when it comes to getting tires for your ride, it's worth the drive. And financing is available. Ask for details. Whatever your tire need, check out Van Alma Tires on Highway 64 between Van Buren and Alma. Ready to get you rolling on new tires at Van Alma Tire. Your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN 95.3. Welcome back into Halftime Live from the Crabtree RV Studios. Crabtree RV Center in Alma, where we make your dreams come true. All right, I think the gang's all together once again now. I uh, appreciate Ty Richardson filling in for the C unit who had, uh, well, this is more about the <laughs> adventures of Asher. Um, Matt, does C unit look like he's okay? Has he had himself a rough morning with Asher needing to go to the vet? I feel like there might be a little bit of this first child syndrome with, yeah. with C unit. This is the first dog. I think the second dog he gets when he gets pink eye, he's just going to like, you know, slap him and say, get better, yeah. you know? So he's a little worried uh, about everything. Yeah. He's kind of, He's learning. That, See, unit's Asher, learning. Does Asher have a little helmet to walk around the house with and elbow no. pads? Do you have like little corner pads to make sure that everything, you know, you don't you don't let Asher stick his snout into the into the uh, into the cabinet where you keep all of your your cleaning chemicals. Now that's also assuming that you keep cleaning cleaning ke- chemicals in your house. C unit. I've seen your car before. Yeah. Any <laughs> anything uh, he can get, he will try to get. Uh, that's and I've kind of just given up. <laughs> so. Uh, tell us the last thing he digested that he wasn't supposed to. Uh, probably plastic, paper, 
grass. Poor guy ended up. What did his eye look? His eye, he sent us a photo of what the eye looked like. It looked, um, <clears throat> oh, I don't know. I mean, it looked it looked bad. Now the idea, he took him to the vet. That's why he wasn't with us for the first 45 minutes of the show. And now, um, Matt, can you some at some point maybe this weekend find a way to get a video of seeing it trying to put eye drops in his puppy's <sighs> eye? Like, that would be really entertaining. I don't know what I'm doing on Sunday. If we don't have a, a game on Sunday, we'll get back in a day earlier. I need I need entertainment. I think that video would be really entertaining. It'd be comedy, that's for sure. What the, would the vet say? He's got allergies. Did, it's, really, it's really common in his, his type of breed. Did you get some drops or did you get uh, some, like a Benadryl or something? Got what some it, medication okay, I gave okay. him and then the eye drops. That's, that's a work in progress. You know what? Asher's got a good life. You know, you start thinking about. It. I mean, he getting really taken. Does. He sees the doctor more than I do. He sleeps I, in yeah. every morning when I when I get up. He he sleeps in in my bed till nine. Well, I, I you know maybe maybe a song to play during the golden hour, hour number three, today for the theme of where I can see how this relationship is going. You've maybe heard of the police before. See unit, please say yes. You've heard of the police, right? Yes. Okay, Sting. You know about them. Uh-huh. Um, wrapped around your finger because I think I think Asher's got. You, that's a song about your relationship with Asher. And it's not the human singing about the dog. It's the other way around. I just don't want him to die. I thought you were going to go, don't stand so close to me. I thought that's... That's, <laughs> that's, an, ex- that's an exit joke right there. That was well done. Now we're going to take a break and come right back with more halftime. The Camping World RV Expo is coming to the Choctaw Casino and Resort in Pecola, Oklahoma, April 18th through the 21st. Admission and parking are free. Tour over 50 fully staged new RVs starting at less than $5 a day. Plus, take advantage of special RV Expo pricing. Participate in the ultimate RV giveaway for your chance to win a new RV and more. Don't miss the Camping World RV Expo at the Choctaw Casino and Resort in Pecola, Oklahoma, April 18th through the 21st. Learn more at CampingWorld.com slash Pecola. Certain restrictions apply. For more details, visit CampingWorld.com slash Pecola. We're back with the action. Coke Zero Sugar might be the best Coke ever. That's right, Jim. With an irresistible taste and zero sugar, Coke Zero Sugar is a must try for any sports fan. So make sure you. Wait, Jim, I didn't mean try it right now. We're still on the air. Mmm. Best Coke ever? Take a taste, Jen. Really? No, not right now, Jen. We got a game to call. Drive a compact SUV that has more style, power, and technology with the 2023 Buick Envision at Harry Robinson Buick GMC right now. Get 1.9% financing for 60 months on remaining 2023 Buick Envisions or choose up to $3,500 in factory discounts. The Buick Envision, it's all about you and designed to inspire. Experience the new Buick at Harry Robinson Buick GMC. Exit 11 off of I-540 in Fort Smith. Bet Saracen is Arkansas's number one mobile app for placing sports wagers. There's big news in the mobile sports betting business. Bet Saracen was just named the 15th largest sports book in America. That's because Arkansans like to do business with a winner. Find all your winners on Bet Saracen. Download it today and look for my double R prop bet specials. I pick them, you win them. Bet Saracen is Arkansas's favorite sports wagering app. Gambling problem? Call 800 522 4700. Are you tired of the overcrowded fitness centers? Would you like a fitness option where you can actually work out? Then let's hang out. The Hangout is Fort Smith's newest fitness facility. It has an 8,000 square foot gym, indoor tennis, pickleball, and basketball with more sports coming soon. The Hangout offers group and individual training in the gym and boasts three active tennis pros to help you grow your game. Stop in today at 5400 Gary Street or thehangoutfs.com for more information. Be a part of something different. Fitness, sports, and more. Let's hang out. ESPN Arkansas weather. For today, plenty of sunshine, a much cooler day, a slight chance of seeing a shower or a thunderstorm across the south. Highs today in the mid to upper 60s. We'll see a decent chance of some showers and storms tonight, overnight low in the upper 40s. And then Saturday will host a few showers, a few isolated thunderstorms, highs near 60.
I'm Sally Russell with your forecast on ESPN Arkansas. The weather is brought to you by In Good Spirits, Fort Smith's premier source for fine wines, specialty beers, and liquor. KERX Paris, Fort Smith. This is Halftime, coming at you from the Crabtree RV Studios on ESPN 95.3. Coming to you live from the Crabtree RV Center Studios. Broadcasting on ESPN Arkansas and streaming on hitthatline.com. We got a good one tonight. You got a team in here that's a perspective. Live from the Bush Light Studio. No accident if I'm all right. Walk in, sit, dominate, and we're not doing it. We're going to go get one and celebrate on somebody else's show. Man, Judge, man, take it to the both said you had very motivational words at halftime. It's halftime with Bill Olson and Matt Jones. From the bottom of my toes to the top of my head. I have zero respect for saying no ma at halftime. one race back. It's vintage Matt Jones. Here we go. Right now, let's take the field. Call or text on the McClarty Daniel Hotline, 877-377-6963. Now, here's Phil Olson and Matt Jones. Hi, and welcome back into Halftime on ESPN Arkansas and HitThatLine.com. Moving you into your 12 o'clock hour, where it's 1 o'clock where I am here in Columbia, South Carolina. And the sun is out. It's a good thing. Over the last hour, it uh, rained. It stopped raining. They pulled the tarp. They mowed the field. The sun has come out. So, yes, not going to be a problem getting baseball in. I still haven't heard anything about tomorrow or Sunday. Going to think if there's any change in the schedule that might happen for uh, a rainy day Sunday, maybe a doubleheader tomorrow, but nothing is being, uh, nothing's being sent my way about that at all just yet. So 6 o'clock tonight, 5.30 we get on the air, Arkansas and South Carolina. Matt, did you see this story on ESPN about Bill Belichick's job hunt, which took him, I don't remember how long it was. Was it about a, was it about a month throughout the month of January? And he's been frozen out, and it looks like all he'll be doing in the NFL season is um, working on the Manning cast on Monday Night Football. Man, that's a good gig right there. Uh, you know, when I saw Teddy Bruschi talk about him because he played for him, uh, and competitors compete, man, so you know he wants to get a job and he wants to, uh, you know, break the record. I, I think Dallas did just enough to, to keep McCarthy and, and that, that they're going to give it one more go around. I, I, I really do buy into that if it doesn't, it doesn't work in Dallas this year that that he could be the next ball coach there. I think it's just, a, it, it might be good for him to kind of sit out for a year and, and, and check it out and, and, and go that route. But how cool is that to get to hear him talk a little bit about football? Because he doesn't give you a whole lot of X's and O's and schematics when, when you're talking. You know, he kind of just, he's he's very reserved and guarded with what he speaks. He doesn't give a lot of nuggets out. So that'd be, that'd be cool, interesting to see how it goes. Well, I don't know how it'll work out with him and Eli and 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 Peyton on the Manning cast, and I think it's just been it's been rumored that that's where he's going to sign, um, but I don't think it's it's been or pen pen has been put to paper yet. But we know Saban is going to be on on um, on ESPN in, in various roles, so we'll be hearing from him. I hadn't heard anything about Pete Carroll about what Carroll's going to be doing um, for this next football season. <laughs> it sounded to me like he wasn't all that happy about um, what went down with the Seahawks, uh, that he was supposed to be up, like, elevated into a front office position, but I don't know if that's actually happening or not. I thought he might, you know, obviously he's not being head coach right now for anybody, but uh, that's somebody that's not, he's talkative. Like, he'll he'll speak. <laughs> he's gregarious. Oh, he, he's made for that. I, I think Fox Sports is where, that when I, when you, when you know, because you got what, NBC Sports, ESPN, ABC, that's what Saban's doing. Uh, I guess that's what Belichick's doing too. Uh, you know, Tom Brady, didn't he sign the big deal with Fox Sports, him and Gronk? Yeah, this next year is his first year he's supposed to work. But, but doing that, that show, yeah, Pete Carroll's made, that's, I mean, he's, that's exactly, you're exactly right. You'd love, he has personality, like the, I mean, his enthusiasm, 
He's uh, they're all three kind of connected there with uh, with Belichick and Carroll and Saban. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they all ret- all well retired isn't the right word. Saban retired. Um, Belichick was fired. relieved. Oh, yeah. I mean, relieved of his vi- of his duties. I was going to say vice duties, but he ran it all. And Carroll was like it was a. It was an elevation into the front office. Well, we're going to take this coaching job away from you. Thank you very much. So it was all different things. But Belichick was looking for work. I mean, I don't know if Carroll was trying to get a head coaching job or not, but we knew about Belichick interviewing with, uh, I think, the Eagles. And, and, and it Falcons. felt like if it was going to happen, it was going to happen with Atlanta because of a relationship with Arthur Blank. In this article that, that ESPN reported on uh, three different reporters reporting this Don Van Natta Jr. saying uh, Seth Wickersham and Jeremy Fowler uh, combining for this you know I mean the, the owners all have their own relationships with each other and I found it interesting how the place where Belichick may have had his best opportunity in Atlanta the report is is that Arthur Blank and Kraft are the best of friends so, of course, you call your best of friend to get a report on your potential head coach. And basically, Kraft sunk Belichick, told him, told, told Blank that he was, um, that, that, uh, that you couldn't trust him. That, those were the words, can't trust him. Um, he would go over, over the owner's head, and that sunk him for the most part. I think they might have been ready to hire him. I mean, they even took it. They even took Belichick out on uh, on Blank's yacht and and did the whining and dining thing and and then he talked to Blank and and that sunk it. So, I mean, you, it, we we thought that there would be the, the, there was this thing and I think there there was with Brady and Belichick, but I think the real dislike is between Kraft and Belichick more than anything. It's the owner well, and the what? coach, not necessarily the coach and the quarterback. That's a thing too, but I think it's bigger with the coach and the and the owner. You know, American sports, we we hold on to our stars a lot longer than European sports. They they get rid of you first sign of decline. And and Belichick saw Brady was declining a little bit and he told Kraft and they went in that move and then Tom Brady goes and wins a Super Bowl and the and the Patriots go downhill. That's where the disconnect was. Kraft saw that he had another three years that he could do it and Belichick was ready to move on, which it makes sense. You see it, but the, that's the that, that that takes you to a whole nother conversation. What's Belichick's record without Brady and what's his record with oh, with yeah. Brady? But that's the biggest that's what I'd heard. The biggest disconnect was that he said Brady's washed, Brady's done. Brady goes and, and gets that Tampa Bay team to a Super Bowl, wins a Super Bowl, uh, and then Kraft's like, what well, what, what happened? we got Charlie here on the McClarty Daniel Hotline. Uh, we'll break in, in a bit, and we've got James Teague from the Teague Law Firm and a former Arkansas pitcher coming up in the next segment. Good afternoon, Charlie. How you doing today? What's up, guys? What's up, Matt? Hey, man, look, why are you trying to make – I know you, you know, uh, forecasting Belichick to the Cowboys. Do you guys just want me to, to tune in to become an alcoholic? Is that what this is? I mean, is that the idea, Matt? Who do you yeah, want? Who do you want to be the the ball coach for Dallas? Man, and it, you can't have Andy Reid because he's he's taken. No, I mean I just don't think it. I, I'm like Mike Irwin with this, and you. I don't know, man. I I just don't know if the Joneses will, and maybe if Bill's willing to take less of. You know, role as far as you know being in control. I, I agree with you that I think he deserves an opportunity to like go get the record because he's that good and he's had a heck of a career. But I just, you know, to me they're setting up Mike McCarthy this year number one to be the scapegoat because it's like we're not going to do any. We're going to before free agency say we're all in, and I'm just quoting Jerry Jones, and then not do nothing. So and not do any. We have done nothing to improve this team to me, uh, to improve their team. And now they're going to go into the draft and be like, uh, rely on a bunch of rookies to, I just don't, I, I don't like the way they do things anyways. And I'm a Cowboys fan and I hate it. Oh, you're so, going to have a fresh start. Well, you're going to have a fresh start, Charlie. It's just, it's going to be 2025. It'll be a new head coach. It'll be a new quarterback. <laughs> thank and you, there'll, be, there'll be more questions to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just keep playing musical chairs with new coaches and new quarterbacks. And yeah, I know, I know that's where it's going. That's where we're headed. But anyway, I want to talk about this baseball thing. Uh, Phil, I, I've never, I've always wondered this. So, 
this might be a really dumb, stupid question, so I'm going to ask it anyways, uh, because it doesn't mind asking dumb, stupid questions. Uh, tonight, since South Carolina is not throwing their ace, right, what if Arkansas just decided to throw a little psychology back at them and throw their number two guy out there? Would it make sense? Even, yeah, well, if they were gonna, if they were going to do that, Charlie, then the, what is what's important for Arkansas right now is they want to keep Hagen Smith on on schedule. The six day rest is is important for for him. And um, with with what South Carolina is doing, I don't think it's just pitching off because we'll see what they do next week. If they keep Eli Jones, who's starting tomorrow, in the second slot, then they're starting to look at their weekends differently than they were previously. Arkansas doesn't have to make any changes. They don't have to look at their weekends any differently than they do. Carolina it, it, it potentially might. Their issue is pitching. They don't, they're don't. they not a very deep pitching staff. Arkansas has got the depth of pitching. So uh, just because they're throwing Eli Jones tomorrow doesn't mean that throwing Mason Molina isn't going to work for Arkansas because Molina happens to have better numbers than Jones does. So uh, it's in, in that case, it's almost a six and one half dozen the other. What's important for the Razorbacks is to keep their starting rotation the way that it is molded now on the right on the same rest week after week. Um, again, I, I I don't I don't think that Carolina is making this change. And Charlie, it's good to hear from you. Thank you. Uh, I don't think Carolina is making this change for just this weekend. Uh, I think they're trying to look into the future of of what the best version of the South Carolina pitching staff can be, and it just happens to be the right time to in this case it is pitching off and making the change in your rotation moving forward so we'll see what happens with them next week there is no reason for arkansas to change anything of what they're doing as far as the pitching staff is concerned what i'm interested to see is how the lineup is built for this next uh, three games is peyton holt going to start in center field is peyton holt going to be batting leadoff or or second in the batting order as we saw against uh, against uh, texas tech is Kendall Diggs okay? I know Diggs was fine yesterday at the workout, but we'll see what happens because he's dealing. He was dealing with an inflamed shoulder, so you know, batting practice and workouts are one thing. Take it to the game, and that's another thing. Those are those are two things that I'm I'm looking at. And uh, and um, hey, right now with Hagen Smith, you just trust the kids going out there is going to give you six to seven innings, and they're going to be high quality innings. Uh, all right. Speaking of Arkansas baseball, we'll break and James Teague from the Teague Law Firm is joining us in just a moment on Halftime. This is Halftime. We are here at the Bud Walton Arena, where it is about as loud as a building can get. The loudest arena to start a game I've ever been in. This is a hard place. You don't come here expecting to win. Let me tell you that. The name, the brand, the identity that he brings to a program that has a storied, rich tradition an outstanding fan base in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Listen to every Razorback basketball game right here on ESPN 95.3 and hit that line.com. Riley Farm Dental at the entrance to Riley Farms provides every type of dental care and procedure for you and your family from general dentistry, braces, implants, and cosmetics. Dr. Sparkman, Davis, and Farmer give all of their patients better lives with a better smile, more confident, and a comfortable experience every time. Riley Farm Dental, 5901 Riley Park Drive, Suite A at the entrance to Riley Farms. Now offer same day crowns. Call 226 3500 for an appointment or visit RileyFarmDental.com. This is Bruce Stanton, Vice President and General Manager of Pradco Fishing in Fort Smith. Our number one volume lure out of our 20 fishing brands is the Bobby Garland Baby Shad. We make them by the millions in our facility in Fort Smith, and the Baby Shad is without a doubt the number one soft plastic crappie lure in the U.S. Fish it on a light jig head or underneath a float, and you'll find it's as productive as live bait. Available at Walmart, Bass Pro Shops, Academy, LureNet.com, and tackle stores all over the place, the Bobby Garland Baby Shad. Barrels and Brews Bottle Shop at the Hub and Chaffee Crossing has everything you need for your favorite activities. Our knowledgeable staff will be glad to help you with the current specials and our new arrivals of must-have bourbons and whiskeys. Hit the cooler for some of the coldest beer in town or choose from our large selection of amazing wines. Order online or call ahead Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. till 10 p.m. At the Hub in Chaffee Crossing. Barrels and Brews, voted best of the best in Fort Smith. It will put a smile on your face. 
The Wave Rural Connect Shoal Creek Zone is open. Fast fiber internet, TV, and home phone available. This covers Midway, New Blaine, Scranton, Delaware, and other areas. Even if this isn't your zone, check your address. We might be available for you. Get your whole home solution. Internet, TV, and phone from a local provider. Go to signup.waveruralconnect.com or call 1-833-492-8372. Arkansas Valley Electric and Wave Rural Connect, changing the communities we serve. Harry Robinson Salisaw Ford wants to buy or trade for your vehicle today, and they will give you top dollar. Pre-owned car values are at historic all-time highs, and your car today is worth more than it ever will be again. If you are driving a 2013 model or newer with 120,000 miles or less, bring it to Harry Robinson Salisaw Ford, and they'll give you more than any other dealer. Even if you don't want to buy a new car, they'll still buy yours. Harry Robinson Salisaw Ford, one mile south of exit 308 off 540 in Salisaw. West, how many people can a large pizza feed? About four. So I should tell Cousin Jeff one. Oh, wow. He's a big eater. The biggest. He once got kicked out of an all-you-can-eat diner because they ran out of food. How many can a small pizza feed? I'd say two. Our small pizza at 15 bucks is a meal for two? We should advertise this. That go to hunt. Dog. What you call me? That dog will hunt. West dogs are man's best friend. Goats are the true hunters. Goats? Billy Go Jr.'s Grammy was trained to chase squirrels, cats, birds, and rabbits. We could hear her for miles through the brush. <laughs> and she'd circle them right to us. You're not serious. As serious as a meal for two for 15 bucks. You're an interesting cat. What you call me? A meal for two for 15 bucks. Eat Jim's Razorback Pizza.com. Your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN 95.3. <laughs> Make sure to follow Halftime on Twitter at Hit That Line AR and on Facebook and Instagram at Hit That Line. Call or text ESPN Arkansas on the McClarty Daniel Hotline, 877-377-6963. Now back to Halftime with Phil Elson and Matt Jones. Joining us right now on the McClarty Daniel Hotline is former Arkansas pitcher James Teague, a member of the Teague Law Firm. And we get to talk to him every Friday on the McClarty Daniel Hotline here on Halftime. Good afternoon, James, and happy Hagen Smith Day. How do you uh, how do you observe Hagen Smith Day? Well, I'm on my way to court right now, and it may be a long one, so I may be watching some highlights. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully I get out of there quickly. So it's game day for the team, and that means it's game day for you too. All right, so you got your game. You're on your way to court. Your game phase is on. You don't need the speech. Uh, how much time do you need to warm up in the bullpen? So I'm pretty prepared. I had a lot of preparation this morning. Uh, I'm going to say 15 minutes. I'll get there, kind of get the documents laid out, get everything assessed, and then, uh, you know, get in the courtroom and get started. All right, sounds good. Um, hey, um, <clears throat> did you pitch at this ballpark at Founders Park? The home of South Carolina? I don't remember if it's the same park. Um, is, is, it, is, it, is it the one they've had for a while? Yeah, there was an old one, Sarge Fry Field, which I think they replaced before your career started. So I'm pr I am I think you would have pitched here. I didn't see you pitch here, but I think you did pitch here. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a pretty funny story. If it is that field from South Carolina that I tell often, um, which just makes me look terrible, but it, it's a funny story nonetheless. Well, I don't know if it's a story you want to get into or not, if it's going to make yeah, you look yeah, good. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a cliffhanger, I guess. Uh, we were there, and I, I was throwing. I came in. It was 
day one. I think it was Friday we were there, and I was facing a lefty, and it was uh, 0-2. And, you know, sometimes 0-2, if you get a fastball away, you try to overthrow it. And I tried to overthrow it, and instead of throwing it low and away, I threw it up and in, and it hit him right in the earpiece. Oh. And it cut his it cut his earpiece, and it, and it cut it in a jagged manner to where his ear was bleeding. And so he was, you know, down on the ground. Everyone thought he got hit in the face, which I guess kind of he, he kind of did. And there was blood everywhere, and it was quiet because everyone was like, you know, is he okay? You could hear a pin drop, and I'm on the mound like, you know, what have I just done? You know, that was nowhere close. And I hear some random guy just yell, get him off the mound. He's a threat to our players. And, you know, everyone heard it, and I'm sitting there like wanting to, you know, kind of curl into a ball but trying to maintain, you know, my posture and my, you know, sense of confidence. So the next guy that comes up, I'm thinking, okay, you just hit this guy in the face. Let's just kind of get back on track. Threw an OO fastball, and he hit it. Had to be 500 feet. I found out later that guy was on copious amounts of steroids as a JUCO transfer. And so that was that. I got pulled, and that was my uh, South Carolina story. Uh, you know, I, hitting batters is a part of pitching, um, and it just it's 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 a mistake. You know, you're trying to you're trying to execute a pitch. Sometimes the ball floats out of your hand a little weird, or you're trying to throw inside, and it just gets away from you a little bit. Now, in a moment like that, where you where you where it's it's dangerous. It's it's different than just hitting somebody with a pitch. If you hit them up in the head, you know, I mean, it's not like you're trying to do that. Does it does it take some time to just sort of collect yourself? Because you got to get back up there and pitch, but at the same time, you know, you're, it's not like you're up there trying to kill anybody. Yeah, I mean, I think it's different. If you're trying to come in on a guy and you hit him in the quad, I mean, that's one thing. Uh, you know, he's he can handle it hitting the quad, but. When you're trying to throw low and away to a lefty and you hit him in the head, that's a pretty big miss. And so at that point, you're kind of thinking, okay, how did that happen? Obviously, this guy got hit in the face. You know, really the face, I think, is the only area where you really kind of feel bad. You know, they got to know they're, they might get hit when they take the box. But you hit someone in the face, that's, that's kind of tough. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's part of it. Uh, I don't, I'm not too rattled. Uh, I think just the face shot is kind of what took it to the next level. But it's also, I mean, look, you have to pitch inside, don't you? I mean, you got batters that are crowding the plate. You can't just pitch on one side of the plate. You can't pitch it down the middle. Pitching inside is, I mean, if you don't pitch inside, you're not going to be successful. Oh, exactly. I think pitching inside, too, the biggest thing about it is it opens up your breaking ball in the outer half. So um, I'm trying to think, you know, kind of like Tommy does from LSU. You see him kind of dive over the plate. He gets that low stance and he'll get two strikes, and he'll kind of slap at the ball and dive over the plate. You really can't do that if someone has to respect the inside corner, especially if they have to respect it, you know, 95 miles an hour or plus, because you can't turn on 95 on the inside and protect on a breaking ball that's on the black outside or away. So for guys who can establish that inner third, especially if they throw, you know, low to mid-90s, that really complements the breaking ball as much as anything. Yeah, and and the thing about Hagen is that look, he can pitch inside with just about everything. Now, you know, you don't come inside with a changeup to a righty when you're a lefty, but uh, just his ability to command everything to me stands out. You know, usually, so you got you got one or you got a couple pitches. You might throw three or four, but you really know that when it comes to commanding, like put it where you want, it's a couple pitches. But he's got he's got four of them that he can put. Almost in in the exact spot, and they're all they're all good. They're all plus pitches. It's not like any of them are a negative or, or a minus pitch. Yeah, the one that's deadly, I think, is the fastball into righties, and then the, the slider off of that that has more depth downward, kind of to their back foot. I mean, if if you're not seeing spin as a right-handed batter, and you see that same fastball that he just threw, you know, 95 and in, you're going to swing at that and strike out. I think that's part of the reason why his breaking ball has been so deadly is. Guys just aren't seeing the spin maybe like they were before, and when they don't see it, if they see fastball all the way because you've been able to show that you can throw that fastball in or out and command it, then you know, you're going to get a swing and miss on that pitch more times than not if they're not recognizing that spin or just looking for it and selling out for it, which you can't do against Hagen because he can command that fastball more times than not. 
You know, I think about your career in, with the Razorbacks started in 2014. That is only two years removed from the last time that South Carolina has advanced to the College World Series. You know, I mean, we still remember them beating the Hogs a couple, a uh, couple times in Omaha on their way to one of the two national championships that they won back to back. The last one played in Rosenblatt. The first one played in the new one downtown. But th- it's a pro- look. It's not a program that's fallen off to where they're a bad program or anything. Um, but it's it's um, it's they're not the same. They're not dominant, and it kind of coincided with Ray Tanner elevating to become athletics director here at South Carolina, where they've had good other programs, but baseball just isn't. Uh, it's not up there right now with the best of the conference in terms of like how Arkansas is, how Florida, LSU, and and Carolina was that for a long time. Yeah, when I was there, they were dominant. You know, they had a guy, Tanner English, who was incredibly fast. They had a guy named Griner behind the play. He's a big 6'5 six, five, six, five catcher who could hit. Uh, the year before I got there, I think uh, Michael Ross, he was a left-handed pitcher, took them to, to the World Series. And they had a lot of big-name guys who, you know, could really hit, he could really pitch, and, and they were kind of an ominous presence, really, when we were there because they were just that good. I, I agree with you. That, that feeling has kind of faded a little bit. Not that they're not still a, a great program in the SEC, but not quite the same aura that maybe they had five, ten years ago. Had you and I ever talked about a rain turtle before? I was just thinking of it because I, I don't know if we'll play Sunday or not, and it was raining when I showed up at the park, and there was no rain turtle, and I learned about that in the the 20 or so years that I worked in the minors. Did you ever learn about a rain turtle? Did you ever see somebody draw one, or did you ever have to wipe one, off, wipe one out? No, I, I actually don't know what that is. Still see? can't. All right, the rain turtle is you go you, it only works it it works um, on a cloudy day like this where it's may, maybe like mostly cloudy instead of partly sunny, and then you draw a little you draw a little turtle with a stick on a warning track. You got to make sure you put your four legs, smiley face, okay. and a squiggly mark down the back, and if nobody wipes the thing out, it might give you rain out. It might, and that okay. that reminded me of like I've never seen anybody try that in college ball, and that's because. These guys want to play every single game there that, that that's on the schedule. You remember it had to have been the same when you were in minor league ball. If there was a cloud, guys are hoping for a rainout. Like always, there was just a difference between those two levels of baseball. Oh, we had we had rain dances. We had everything you can imagine that just to find a way for this game not to happen to, to spare us four hours in the bullpen one way or another. We were we were all for it. But when you play, you know. A, 500 games it feels like in a season uh it's a little different than when you can really get ramped up for you know a weekend series at a big time sec park all right let's uh let's talk about citations and court appearances there happened to be a former arkansas quarterback that was in town for a court appearance uh for a misdemeanor for excessive speeding and a mugshot was circulating around and everything so it's a good uh, it's a good topic yeah. to bring up uh, if you need help over at the teague law firm yeah, it's a bit ironic because I wasn't aware until you filled me in, but it was kind of along the same lines that I was thinking. Is it, You know, it can be kind of a, an honest mistake. I got this speeding ticket, oh, I'll deal with it later, or I got this citation, I got a little too rowdy, I'll deal with it later. But if you, if you take that path and you don't deal with it now, you can see that there can be serious consequences. You know, there can be warrants issued, you miss your court appearance, then you got to go to jail, you got to get booked, you got to go do, through the whole process. And so something that could be, you know, rather simple to take care of turns into, you know, quite the ordeal. And that's one thing that we have a lot of experience helping people with, you know, one of our quotes that we say, you know, whether it's a misdemeanor or all the way up to a felony, we can help you. And I think that's something that, you know, I would stand by because just because it's small and rather innocuous seeming, it still can blow up if you don't get it taken care of. And that's something that we can take, we can handle for sure. James, always appreciate these visits. Um, I would say good luck in court, but I don't know if luck is a thing in court, like it might be in baseball sometimes. No, we're we're, we're going to hang up. It's going to be game face time. With, you know, it's all business. Go in, you know, get it taken care of. But I'm looking forward to it. This one should be interesting. So uh, I'll give you an update next week. Okay. Appreciate you, James. Thank you very much. That's, Teague, that's James Teague from the Teague Law Firm and former Arkansas pitcher. They're the best of Northwest Arkansas, three out of the last four years. James can help with all family law matters, any criminal law matter. Also help with estate needs. You'll talk to real lawyers. Call James at the Teague Law Firm at 479-877-1688. 
1688 or online at teague-law.com. Stay with Halftime. We are back in just a moment. This is Halftime. You can now download our new app in the iTunes or Google Play Store. Listen anytime and anywhere on your favorite mobile device. Just search Hit That Line now. Home is everything. It's your sanctuary, your command center, your music room, and your art studio. It's where you eat family dinners and make lasting memories. When you use a Weikert agent to help you find your home, we'll help you find the space to make it yours. When you begin your search, know that a Weikert agent will be there with you every step of the way. Because at Weikert Realtors, we guide you home. To get started, call your local Weikert agent and look for our bright yellow signs all over town. At Weikert Realtors, we sell more because we do more. Each Weikert franchised office is independently owned and operated. So we have heard you loud and clear. That's right, over 300 in stock heavy duty ready for delivery. And now Ram has lowered the MSRP on their heavy duty trucks up to $10,000. That's right, and Red River is offered up to another $10,000 off. Folks, you won't find a better deal anywhere else in the state than right here. No one's going to give you a better deal during Ram Truck Month. So make that beautiful drive right here to Hebert Springs. Or check us out on the web at redriverdodge.com. And at Red River, we, we deliver. Up. This is halftime. If you've lived in the River Valley for a while, you know about the great reputation of Jam Mart. And their newest location at 6201 Grand Avenue in Fort Smith is open. Stop by for coffee, gas, beer, snacks, ices, and a clean restroom every time. Don't forget about the hot deli and fresh made burgers. Now seven locations in Fort Smith, Greenwood, Boonville, Ozark, and Danville. Sign up for their loyalty program for discounts throughout the stores. Jam Mart, the leading convenience store and gas station in the region. Hello, this is Sebastian County Assessor Zach Johnson here to remind you to assess your personal property by May 31st to avoid late penalty. You can do this in person at one of our three locations, over the phone, or online by going to www.countyservice.net. I would also like to remind any current homeowners or individuals buying their homes on contract to contact our office and check on your eligibility for the Homestead Tax Credit. Contact us today to see if you qualify. The Homestead Tax Credit can save you up to $425 off of your tax bill. This ad sponsored by Sebastian County Assessor and paid for by a minute. 79. Walk-ons is always a win. Whether it's a post-game celebration, drinks with the crew, or an easy weeknight dinner, Walk-ons has you covered. Scratch-made dishes, wall-to-wall TVs, craft beers and cocktails. Dig into mouth-watering menu items like po'boys, gumbo, and voodoo shrimp, plus fan favorites like juicy burgers and fresh salads. Find your nearest location in Rogers, Fayetteville, Fort Smith, Conway, and coming soon to Little Rock. Or order online or in the app. Walk-on Sports Bistro for the win. Got a pest? Call West. If you have pest or termite problems in your home, call West today and learn how their 50 years combined experience can help solve your problems with competitive pricing and quality services. All designed with your pets and children in mind. Call today and schedule your free estimate. They even offer Saturday services and long life attic pest control. Call 782-7291. West Termite and Pest Control. Protecting your home health and peace of mind. Are you over 30 and putting off life insurance? It's time to get a quick quote from Ethos, a better, easier way to get term life insurance, all online with no medical exam. Answer a few health questions and you could be approved for up to $2 million. Isn't it worth 10 minutes to help protect your family's financial security? Ethos, up to $2 million in coverage with no medical exam. Some policies as low as a dollar a day. Answer a few health questions and get your free quote at checkethos.com. That's checkethos.com. Looking for a new piece of heavy equipment? Come on over to Sharp Equipment today and explore our latest offers and deals as a Wacker Newson dealer and a Cinnabogan authorized service provider. From excavators with the best-in-class breakout force to powerful skid steers, we'll be sure to find the right equipment for you. Stop in Central Hydraulics and see us at Sharp Equipment, located at 6104 Highway 271 South in Fort Smith, or give us a call at 479-242-1406 your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN 95.3. Oh, 
Welcome back to Halftime with Phil Elson and Matt Jones. Got a question or comment for the guys? Call or text on the McClarty Daniel hotline, 877-377-6963. Let's get back to the show with the voice of Arkansas Razorback baseball, Phil Elson, and Razorback football legend, Matt Jones. Oh my gosh, this is just ridiculous. Uh, Did you ever get a chance to go into the cockpit uh, as a kid when you were on an airplane? Nobody's ever been allowed in since since 9-11, but I, I went in when I was a kid. I got my little Delta, my Delta wings pinned. South, south, southwest wings, yep, yep. Well, you're not allowed to do that anymore. <clears throat> Somebody either didn't tell Rockies hitting coach Hensley Mullins or did not inform the United crew that was flying the Colorado Rockies on their most recent charter that you're not supposed to allow anybody into the cockpit. <laughs> Hensley Mullins, who I remember Mullins, he had a nickname Bam Bam. That's a great nickname for a baseball player. He didn't really pan out. He was supposed to be a big, big-time prospect uh, for the Yankees. In fact, Bubba played with him in, in the Yankees organization. And uh, he played for a while in the big leagues, but he, it, it, it never really panned out. He wasn't what he was supposed to be, and that's tough to do. But he's a hitting coach <clears throat> for, for the Rockies, and he Instagrammed a video of him in the cockpit basically joking about, yeah, I'm flying the plane, and you can see the vice pilot next to him, and I wonder where the other, where the real pilot is, where the head pilot is, and he's not there. And since Mullins Instagrammed this, now the FAA has launched an investigation of how a passenger gained access to the cockpit of a 757 at cruise altitude in violation of both United policy and FAA regulations. <clears throat> that's, uh, that, that, that's a new one. Although it's not quite as new as I guess I'd thought because I was on a bus once with the travelers where the bus driver... I'm pretty sure that he'd he'd knocked back a few, and he was still driving the bus, and he had to relieve himself, and rather than pull the bus into a gas station or a rest stop, he just asked the second string catcher to drive the bus so that he could go into the back and use the restroom facilities. Um, I actually did, I lived through that. I'd be a little more nervous, I guess, if... Uh, the backup catcher was flying the plane, but that that's one of the that's one of the scarier moments I think I'd I'd had um, traveling with a minor league baseball team. I'm going to guarantee you, Nate Thompson is not getting access to the easy breezy flight that's taking us back home to Fayetteville either late tomorrow if we have a doubleheader or on Sunday. Those uh those bus drivers we we'd get uh. That X and A, and we you'd come back to oh, I don't know if it's lot fifty one, what what lot it ever it was, um, twenty years ago. But that that's where you'd park your cars and, and and then you'd meet up. But they would race, you know, on the way back and see those bus drivers getting it and be like, he ain't gonna pass me. That we'd cheer him on, you know, o- only if you won, because if you lose, it's you know you don't get to make a lot of noise when you when you lose. But it was always the bus driver driving the bus, right? It wasn't. Uh... <clears throat> What's what, that? What? Uh, Anchorman Two. You seen Anchorman Two? I don't they, remember. They get, it's chicken of the uh, the sky. You know, he's serving bats instead of chicken. But they all they all get back together and they get on the bus in their in their 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 RV and they're driving. And then and then all of a sudden they all notice they're just talking, having a conversation. Well, who's who's driving the bus? We who's put driving that on the bus? pilot? What are you talking about, man? It's on I, cruise control. I don't think you understand cruise control. I used to sit up front with our bus driver for almost every ride, at least part of it. I, I just and I, I can fall asleep on a bus no matter what. But I, I, I he and I got along well. His name was Jim, and everybody called him Buzz. Uh, this was not Buzz, who was the one who, who let uh, the backup catch his name. It was Brent Del Chiaro, who um, I think he might have been coaching at Kansas. I'm not because that's where he played college ball. But 
Yeah, um, I, I got an investigation launched into that driver. It was a backup driver. He was meeting us to meet our usual driver because it was a lengthy trip. I think we were either going to Wichita or we were going out to Midland or something. And so they broke up the, they broke up the drive five hours for one guy, five hours for the next guy. So it would have been the vice driver that I'm going to – I mean, why else? Why else would you ask anybody that doesn't have the license to drive a bus – to drive the bus for you when you've got 35 human beings on there that you are basically supposed to make sure get to the next place safe. The only answer I had is that he was either the dumbest idiot who'd ever driven a bus or he was drunk. It had to be drunk. He had one job, you know, you're the bus driver. Well, he did get us to the, he did eventually get us there. Just took us a little bit, a little bit longer. And I've, oh, I interviewed the, I interviewed Brent about it for the pregame show the next day. <laughs> I'd have to dig through like all my old stuff. All those interviews are on old mini discs. And I still, it's funny, I got a mini disc player. I can play those, but I don't have a cassette player for any of the cassettes. Um, anyway, that just, that just, that just kind of brought it back. I haven't been on a long bus ride in a long time. I'm spoiled with the travel with, <clears throat> with women's basketball and with baseball. But before that of the minor leagues, yeah, I'd be a little nervous that, Maybe maybe the driver needed a vice driver, needed a needed a backup guy that could do it. Because look, there was one guy that our manager in Utah refused to go to sleep. He would not go to sleep on the bus because he was afraid that the bus driver was going to go to sleep. And every once in a while, it looked like he might have been actually tipping over a little bit. So thank you, Ed Cedar, for staying awake and keeping us alive. Take a phone call from Will. A, who is right here in Columbia, where I am right now? Will, what part of Columbia are you? Are how far from Founders Park? Um, like five minute walk. Um, basically in the neighborhood, right next to Five Points, which is about five minutes from the stadium, about ten minutes from where the team's staying. Yeah, so yeah. basically in that area. Yeah, because yeah. you were at the Hyatt, right? Uh, I don't know where the team is staying, honestly. Uh, but I mean, everybody goes. Everybody always stays downtown. When you when you come with basketball, you stay downtown. I don't know where football stays, but baseball always stays downtown. Yeah, I got it. Uh, yeah, hey, it should be a fine two days. Do you think they play on Sunday or no? Well, that was my guess. I don't. I don't. I I I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I have any inside info as to whether or not they're talking about it. But I can't imagine they're at least not talking about about sunday because the last time i looked it's like 70 to 80 percent chance of rain all day which which in college man that means quite often you move that sunday game to saturday and play a double header so i wouldn't be surprised if they did it but i think if that is if that is what they're thinking about doing there'd have to be some kind of an announcement in the next three four hours what are you talking about i think i think it's week coming i think either either hagan or mason tossing a no-no you think there's going to be a no hitter thrown, or you make that's the boldest prediction you can possibly make? I mean, just go for a sweep, or just say they're going to win. But you're going for a no hitter. I'm going for a no hitter. I think Hagen's about to own these guys. Well, I, look, I think it, it's a it's a veteran group of hitters. Look, Hagen took a no hitter into the sixth inning against Alabama last last uh, last Friday, and I think that's a that's a veteran team. And I was impressed with the their lineup. Um, but if he can do it against them, who what's to say he can't do it against South Carolina? He, I, I don't think anybody's going to go nine innings though. They're not. They're 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 being pretty cautious um, with all the starting pitchers, not in a negative way. But I just don't know if anybody. If you're going to throw a no hitter, you're going to have to make sure you keep it under about a hundred and five, hundred and ten pitches to go just nine innings. That's pretty difficult to do, even for, even for the way that Hagen's pitching. And I think a big reason why is because, well, he strikes so many batters out. You know, one pitch out, two pitch outs. That that's a way that you get a no hitter if you keep it under a hundred and ten. Entry last year, I knew he got like what two hits? Was he two for sixteen or something? I remember it being really insane how well they handled him. And so that's what – he scares me, but with how they did last week, it just – or the last year version, it makes me think they can do it again to him. Well, he's a different pitcher. I think he's a much different pitcher than he was last year. Well, it's good to hear from you. And uh, good, I guess – good. are you coming out to the games? Are you planning on being at the games? Well, you just hung up. Um, yeah, anything that happened to Hagen last year is – this is a different guy. It's it's not the same pitcher. He might have the same name. He might have the same looking face, 
Uh, he might wear the same uniform number, but it's a it's a different pitcher. It's a better pitcher. So anything that happened previously uh, to me means uh, it doesn't have anything to do with what will happen uh, the next time that he faces them. 877-377-6963 for calls and texts on the McClarty Daniel hotline. I did drive the bus once, but it was in a parking lot, in the parking lot of the San Antonio ballpark, and I was under supervision from the bus driver, the guy who wasn't drunk ever. And I was I didn't go. There were no cars in the parking lot. It was just the bus. The bus was more like a truck uh, with a trailer on it. It was a really interesting vehicle. And I, I got that sucker up to about 20 miles an hour, Matt, and I was scared out of my mind. I'm like, I'm never going to get this thing to stop. How am I going to? It's like the first time that I ever really drove a car, and it went from from – second to third gear because I learned on a on a manual, on a stick shift. When it went from second to third gear, it was like, oh, God, what do I do with this now? That's the way I felt just the moment that I pushed the accelerator down on the bus in the in the San Antonio ballpark parking lot. I thought I was never going to stop the thing, and I thought my life was over. I don't ever want to drive the bus. No. Call you the bus driver because you're taking them to school? I, uh... I think a fire truck would be cool to drive. What 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 about the wheel man? Is he called the vice the fi- the vice driver, the guy that drives the 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 car in the back, the fire truck in the back? So, you know, I'm the driving the truck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, oh my gosh, of course. I, and you kept and you still kept up. making the stops. Well, you know, I had, I had to get off the bus. <laughs> I have to get off. See, Kramer drove the bus, and he drove the back, <clears throat> and he drove the back of the of the fire truck. What an existence! What an amazing and Hillman, existence. Hillman and Newman, they did lose their, their, their person carriage because they were having tryouts, and the, the first guy just said, oh, I don't think he's coming back. He's he making also, good time. He also drove, he also drove a, horse, a horse-driven a horse buggy. And, he had to think beefaroni. And uh, he painted, he took out the middle line, you know, painted the road, said, yeah, my, my, they're, they're going to be able to go faster on my strip of land. All lines lead to Seinfeld. Mike and Van Buren, you'll take us into the break. Mike's on the McClarty Daniel hotline. What's up, Mike? How are you? Hey, I got a better one than what you had. Uh, I was playing baseball in high school a long time ago, okay, I, back in the 60s. And uh, we went to the state. We made it one of the conference, went to the state tournament. And on the way back, we didn't get to take a bus. We had to take three cars, and there was five ball players plus a coach in each car. And the middle, the, the end driver, the driver that, that I was with, got way behind on purpose, pulled over, bought two six packs of beer and handed them out to the ball players on his way home. Honestly, it's about 120 miles to the tournament. And uh, I thought, my goodness, that coach would should have been fired a hundred times over, but he actually bought beer for us. And all of us were, I was a junior, so I was 16 and uh, all of us were just kids. And he pulls over and buys beer. And at that time in Oklahoma, you had to be 21 to buy beer. And you he don't bought now? two six packs of beer and passed them out. Do you have to be 21 to buy beer right now in Oklahoma, Mike? I don't know. I, I, I think it's 18, but I know at that time you had to be 21. This was back in the 60s. Okay. <clears throat> I think it's still 21. Um, but, man, that is, that – that that's a story that could only be told from years ago. Is is, is kind of the way that I that I view that. But I, I appreciate the phone call, Mike. It's it's good to hear from you. Eight seven seven three seven seven sixty nine sixty three. I guess we're talking scary uh, sports travel stories now. I had a had a great track coach, a great ball player in his own right, Coach Relliford uh, at, at Northside, and and uh, pulled my hamstring on a, at a track meet, and so he stopped at the convenience store and just grabbed a big bag of ice out of the freezer. And set the thing full and said, sit on this for 10 minutes uh, as we're, you know, and just let it, because it's the yellow dog, it's at the back seat of the bus, help the hamstring. It was the first time I, re- you know, that you kind of, when you start realizing things, it's like, oh, that ice stuff really did work. Hamstrings felt good the next day, but Coach Relliford was the man. Who needs a hospital? Who needs a trainer station? You That's back when the coaches, store. I had a, I had another coach, Coach Carter, uh, at, at, at Van Buren, like sophomore year, you know, you twist your ankle. They didn't have a training guy. One of the assistant, one of the vice coaches had to go out there and, and tape your ankle. Yeah. I'll be right back. I'm going to run to the Circle K, get some ice for that thing. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll wrap up the second hour of halftime after this. This is halftime. 
Hello, friends. This is Matt Jones from Halftime. Join myself and Phil Elson as we do the show live from Lumber One in Van Buren, Friday, April 26th from 11 to 2, and we celebrate Customer Appreciation Day. Stop by, grab a dog or a burger, talk Razorback sports, check out Lumber One's new showroom, and let's have a good time. That's this Friday, April 26th, Halftime Live at Lumber One, 3335 Industrial Park Road in Van Buren. Insurance company throwing you a curveball? Are they crowding the plate and not offering you a fair settlement? If you've been injured in a car wreck, you need an experienced attorney to fight for you. I'm Jackie Mock with Mock Legal Solutions. Licensed in Arkansas and Oklahoma, no win, no fee. Call Mock Legal Solutions today for your free consultation. 479-769-1505. Real advice, reasonable price. <laughs> Metal Mart offers high-quality prefabricated metal buildings, metal roofing, custom trim shop, carports, and more. They strive to be a company where contractors, as well as do-it-yourselfers, are welcome. Metal Mart assists you in calculating the materials needed to complete your project, all at a rate you can afford. Stop by 7320 Highway 271 South in Fort Smith or call 648-3342. You can also catch them online at MetalMarts.com. Metal Mart, the right material for the right price. Remodeling your bathroom? Don't let your imagination be limited by out-of-the-box shower doors or tub enclosures. Arkansas Glass & Mirror is your local source for all things glass, including plexiglass, mirrors, and shower doors since 1964. Arkansas Glass & Mirror has more selections, better prices, and the experience to help you build the shower of your dreams. They also have the only showroom in the area to help you create those dreams. Professional installation and professional service. Only at Arkansas Glass & Mirror, 1316 South Zero, Fort Smith, or online at ArkansasGlassAndMirror.com. Hmm, let's see. Leaky faucet Tuesday. Water flooding the yard. Hmm, better put that down for the middle of the month when the bills aren't due. Honey, what are you doing? Planning our plumbing problems, of course. You can't plan our plumbing problems, but you should plan our plumber. What do you mean? Like all important contacts, I keep West Ark Plumbing in my phone. They're always there when we need them, and they don't overcharge since they know we don't plan our plumbing problems. Here, honey, here's their number. 646-5151. Thanks, babe. West Ark Plumbing. We keep you flowing. The adventure starts at Tackle Box for sportsmen just like you. We all know those tackle places we find along streams and rivers that we just have to stop in and check out their lures. Kind of off the beaten path and probably a little rustic. Well, we have that same kind of place right here in the heart of Fort Smith. For almost 50 years, the Tackle Box has been serving up all the supplies and equipment you could ever think of and more. The Tackle Box, 3010 Street, Fort Smith. The adventure starts at Tackle Box for sportsmen just like you. Sometimes I'm in a hurry. Stay in the slow lane, buddy. That's when I use the Sodies app to order my favorites and pick up in their drive-thru. They even offer a 10% discount on your first app order. Experience different at Sodies Wine and Spirits off I-540 on Phoenix Avenue. Every day is worth celebrating at Uncorked. Cocktails, wine, craft beer, bourbons, and unbelievably great food. Uncorked on Phoenix Avenue next to Sodies. Do you need gutters but think they're too expensive or that you need to get the soffit or fascia ready? No worries. Call the gutter guy. He does it all. No need to call multiple companies to get the right gutters for your home. Call the gutter guy. Quality, low maintenance, leaf-free gutters with a five-year warranty. The gutter guy also does vinyl siding and windows. The gutter guy. Over 30 years experience. Call 226-1259. Call the gutter guy. It's your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN 95 3. <laughs> Welcome back into Halftime Live from the Crabtree RV Studios. 
Crabtree RV Center in Alma, where we make your dreams come true. Uh, Matt, disappointed sports fan, texted in, and uh, the person who drives the rear of the truck is not the vice driver. He's called the Tiller Man. Oh, like Push a Man. I yeah, like it. Yeah, like Tiller Man. It would be the same as, I guess, driving the back of a boat where you need somebody to steer in the back. Why, why is there not a rapper named that yet? Why do we not have DJ Tiller Man? Like, that should be something. I mean, you putting the fires out, going all day, you're so hot. Like, what? what's up, Tilla, man? You can picture the persona, too. Oh, just... oh, that's just, man, somebody needs to copyright that. Or what do you do? Uh, oh, what do you get the domain name or what, whatever it's called? Well, guess guess what? Guess what, Matt? There apparently is an artist named Tilla, man. I've just looked it up in my Apple Music. Here. Well, he's hot, hot garbage, though, so we can put him <laughs> out and get a new one. His latest, uh, his latest single came out in 2023. It's called Numero Uno. Oh, Which, is he Mexicano? I don't know. Yeah, El Fuego. No Love. Pull, uh, there, here's one song called Pull Her Hair. So I don't know if we'll play that one. Might be something to listen to later on after the ball game. Polar Bear. <laughs> Teleman. Very good. I do like the persona, though. I, I bet you he's not. Yeah, no, the photo of him here is definitely not of him wearing a... Uh, Wearing a fire a fire chief hat or a lengthy uh, lengthy fire jacket or anything like that, I really can't even describe what it is that he's doing here because that might get me in trouble. Tell a man is not what you thought it would be, Matt. Yeah, I don't think I uh, uh, wasn't. Uh, wasn't no, you, I think you were thinking. You were thinking perfectly. You were creating. You were uh, you were like a producer that was putting a band together. I thought you had a really good idea. Well, he would have been typecast as somebody else. We would be cat. We we we'd have called his agent and said we're going in a different direction. Yeah, I had to go in a different direction when I saw that he's got a song named "Pull Her Hair." Uh, anyway, we'll leave it at that. I think I should have said that once the music started. Eight and the golden hour apparently has already begun. It's uh, by the way, I heard. Did I hear Tommy Kraft use the term golden hour for the last hour of the morning rush this week? The only reason he would do that is because Ty Richardson literally had no voice today. I listened as I listened to the morning rush today while I was getting some work done. And I, I, I don't always feel bad for Ty on the morning rush when he gets kicked around like a sock puppet. But today I did. It, there's just no way to answer back. If you don't have a voice, how can you answer back? It sounded like he had smoked an entire pack, not a pack, a case of Newports. Stay away from those things, Ty. They get fiberglass in them. And stay with us. Halftime is into the golden hour right after this. The Camping World RV Expo is coming to the Choctaw Casino and Resort in Pecola, Oklahoma, April 18th through the 21st. Admission and parking are free. Tour over 50 fully staged new RVs starting at less than $5 a day. Plus, take advantage of special RV Expo pricing. Participate in the ultimate RV giveaway for your chance to win a new RV and more. Don't miss the Camping World RV Expo at the Choctaw Casino and Resort in Pecola, Oklahoma, April 18th through the 21st. Learn more at CampingWorld.com slash Pecola. Certain restrictions apply. For more details, visit CampingWorld.com slash Pecola. Today is the day. After countless hours of research, cutting back expenses, and nine months of anxiously waiting for her, today is the day you finally bring home your new car. It's also the day to protect her with an auto policy from Shelter Insurance. Our policies are competitively priced and include new car replacement coverage if anything were to happen to your new baby. Call Jeff Clark in Fort Smith or Brad Howe in Van Buren. Are you tired of the overcrowded fitness centers? Would you like a fitness option where you can actually work out? Then let's hang out. The Hangout is Fort Smith's newest fitness facility. It has an 8,000 square foot gym, indoor tennis, pickleball, and basketball with more sports coming soon. The Hangout offers group and individual training in the gym and boasts three active tennis pros to help you grow your game. Stop in today at 5400 Gary Street or thehangoutfs.com for more information. Be a part of something different. Fitness, sports, and more. Let's hang out. 
Come get you some. 2728 Townsend Avenue is your off-road and performance center headquarters. They've got everything from lift kits, wheels, LED light bars, UTV parts and accessories, winches and tires. Need general 4x4 repair? No problem. Come get you some has one of the largest 4x4 shops in the state. They do it all, from installing a bug shield to building some of the baddest off-road machines in the country. Call them today at 782-6833. That's 782-MUD. Or check them out online at cgysoffroad.com. Come get you some. Drive a compact SUV that has more style, power, and technology with the 2023 Buick Envision at Harry Robinson Buick GMC right now. Get 1.9% financing for 60 months on remaining 2023 Buick Envisions or choose up to $3,500 in factory discounts. The Buick Envision, it's all about you and designed to inspire. Experience the new Buick at Harry Robinson Buick GMC. Exit 11 off of I-540 in Fort Smith. ESPN Arkansas weather. For today, plenty of sunshine, a much cooler day, a slight chance of seeing a shower or a thunderstorm across the south. Highs today in the mid to upper 60s. We'll see a decent chance of some showers and storms tonight, overnight low in the upper 40s. And then Saturday, we'll host a few showers, a few isolated thunderstorms, highs near 60. I'm Sally Russell with your forecast on ESPN Arkansas. The weather is brought to you by In Good Spirits, Fort Smith's premier source for fine wines, specialty beers, and liquor. AERX Paris Fort Smith. This is halftime coming at you from the Crabtree RV Studios on ESPN 95.3. Coming to you live from the Crabtree RV Center Studios. Broadcasting on ESPN Arkansas and streaming on hitthatline.com. We got a good one tonight. You got a team in here that's the perspective. Live from the Bush Lights video. Don't ask me if I'm all right. What can't they dominate? And we're not doing it. We're going to go get one and celebrate on somebody else's tail. Big Johns may take it to the house in the dump. Bill said you had very motivational words at halftime. It's the- halftime with Bill Olson and Matt Jones. From the bottom of my toes to the top of my head. I have zero respect for saying no mock at halftime. For one racer back. It's vintage Matt Jones. Here we go. Right now, let's take the field text on the McClarty Daniel hotline. 877-377-6963. Now, here's Phil Olson and Matt Jones. We made it to the golden hour for this week. The sun is shining brightly on what is turning out to be a glorious Friday for baseball in Columbia, South Carolina. I'm Phil Elson at Founders Park. My friend Matt Jones is in our ESPN Arkansas headquarters. The C unit is there with him. Asher's eye is improving, and life is good. Life is good. We're going to have a good golden hour here, take you up until the weekend. Matt, do you have soccer that you got on the weekend later tonight or tomorrow? Or yeah, if I could get this uh, this interweb, there we go. It's starting to work right there. They there's there's soccer all 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 weekend. I'll I'll, I'll figure it out in a second. Well, uh, I'll be here. It's still not hearing anything about a double header yet for tomorrow. You know, I'm, I'm just sort of like almost expecting to hear something about it because of seventy percent chance of rain on Sunday. But we'll uh, we'll see if that does happen. Uh, <clears throat> it's been a interesting show today. I think the most interesting thing I learned is uh, <clears throat> Eddie from Clarksville is a big Florida Georgia line fan. He gives us so many uh, so many moments. I, well, I mean, the first time he ever threw, <clears throat> pardon me, the first time he ever threw Tupac uh, out there into the radio ether, it grabbed it grabbed me a little and it made me interested. The Florida Georgia line thing just kind of scared me a little bit for Eddie. I just hope that doesn't lead to uh, some bad mojo for arkansas baseball and we also learned that you're not supposed to be letting hitting coaches or anybody that's not a pilot into a a uh a, a, a the cockpit of an airplane hensley mullins the hitting coach for the colorado rockies apparently was well it's not apparently he was in the cockpit i mean how many of these investigations get uh, end up coming up because somebody thought it was cute and puts a, a, a video of, of something they're not supposed to do on social media. 
It's half, has to happen all the time. And another, another, another. Go, yeah, Matt, go ahead. Do you remember a time that was a better time when somebody would call your phone and you weren't home to answer it, and then you might call them back in two days instead of this just instant. Every everywhere you go, have to be connected and plugged in. I don't know if if C Unit ever lived in that world, but Phil. I know you lived in a world before cell phones, like a world where you're an adult before cell phones. Well, and you also had to take messages. <laughs> that that was an okay thing to do, was to make a phone call, somebody's not home, take a message, get a phone call back. And if you're not home and that, you know what, sooner or later, we'll connect. You're, you're right. I think you're right. And now it's instant communication and if you don't get back with somebody immediately, well, something's obviously wrong. But it, it goes it goes more than just the texting and the phone calls. It's the constant need to be uh, communicating with social media. Like what, Mullins, does he have to put a video of him on an on, on in a in a cockpit? You know, because it's cool. Without Instagram, without this social media, without the the, the feel to need you know the, to need to put something up there on a daily basis, then this wouldn't have happened. So maybe in that case, it's a good thing because the pilot shouldn't be allowing him in there. Nobody should be allowed in there, especially Cody from Blue Ball, who's called us up here. Cody, no, don't take this the wrong way, but if I ever know that you're allowed into the cockpit of an airplane, I'm not even getting anywhere near that area code. Phil. If you ever catch me in the cockpit, you're not even going to catch me on a plane, buddy. So you ain't even got to worry about that, man. I'm saying right here on this ground, dude. But did you have a good flight over to South Carolina, buddy? Man, I slept I slept for probably 80% of the flight. So, yes, it was a glorious flight. I'd like to, for the same thing to happen whenever we fly home. Oh, man, did you fly first class, Phil? Get a little champagne in one of those hot towels. No, they don't give champagne on flights involving college athletes. It's usually Gatorade and water, um, and that's about it. You can bring your own thing on, but they also do tell you you're not supposed to be drinking alcohol on the flight, so you just stick with that. Okay. Hey, but what about old, uh, man, old uh, Boggs? What about him? He drank plenty of alcohol on the flight. You think anybody stopped that, dude? I don't know. I think a major league flight's a little different than a college flight. Okay. Yeah, well, with man. him, it's yeah. like, hey, wait, hey, look, the guy's hitting 362. Let him do whatever he wants. Let him drink before the game. Yeah, He's eating right. fried chicken before the game. I hear beer and chicken work together. Hey, yes, they do, Phil, and I will definitely agree with that, buddy. But, hey, I was going to tell you guys, uh, I had made my first trip up there to Baum Walker Stadium. I've never been, and last Saturday we was going to Springdale, Phil, and, uh, to play in – Oh, my girl does a travel basketball team, mm-hmm. and uh, but my brother is a police officer on campus there. So I actually went to jail while I was up there looking at the stadium. <laughs> inside the jail, not the jail cell, just inside the jail, met the Sarge, and had a Jolly Rancher in the break room as well, but that's all I took. And uh, But, man, I, I really enjoyed it up there. I didn't get to go, like, inside it because there was a scrimmage game up there, I believe. Am I correct? Last Saturday, something was going on? Uh, last Saturday, well, I don't know what they would have had going on because we were, we were not a there. We were, game. we were in Tuscaloosa. Okay. Are you, well, talking was football, going on. are you talking the football stadium? It was Baum Walker Stadium when we uh, drove up there, but there was something going on up there. I don't know. There was a bunch of people everywhere last Saturday. But uh, and we also, after we got done with Bomb Walker Stadium, we ate at Sassy's as well. We had a the Brit the Philly brisket sandwich man was delicious. Had the little Sassy slaw and uh, some of the waffle fries. And I mean, I really enjoyed it. Did you guys you like that place? You sound like a paid spokesman right now, Cody. To be honest. You oh, take, sorry, Phil. But no, that, no, that's okay. That's okay. No, I love that place too. I'm glad you're able to get to Ballmwalker. It's a, it, you know, it, don't yeah. make it the last time. Make it for a game. Maybe it was the guys I who didn't travel with the team because you can only have 27 travel with the team, and th- there's 13 guys left who don't travel. Right, dude. I would really love to be. I'd really like to go up there when you guys are all up there. I asked if you guys were on campus while I was there. I asked the Sarge, but I don't like you said. You guys were in Tuscaloosa. And uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that I really do hope to meet you guys up there one of these days, and I hope you all have a good weekend, and I sure have missed you guys. Keep on!
I know you're there listening to me, buddy. I hope you guys have a good weekend. I love you, Coco. That's Cody from Blue Ball. Matt's best friend. Uh, yeah, I don't know. The Sarge wouldn't know whether we, whether we were there or not. If you want to know if we're there, <clears throat> ArkansasRazorbacks.com has the schedule. Um, last travel uh, story that I'll have for you here, Matt. This one was scary for me, too. Uh, it involved youth baseball. I would have been, I guess I was 16, maybe 15 or 16. I would have had my driver's permit by this point at least. And I'm playing for a, a team out of my neighborhood in Pittsburgh. The neighborhood's called Squirrel Hill. And we're we're going to some tournament in Tennessee somewhere. I don't even remember what the deal was, but the, it's like somewhere in eastern Tennessee. And we're driving in, in three or four cars, and the gentleman who – was running our team. His his son was on the team, and and the the, the gentleman's name was Mister Di Pasquale, uh, or Di Pasquale, I think is is if I remember the correct pronunciation. And he drove something that felt like an eighty two or an eighty three Lincoln Continental. I mean, big enough to be a tank. Just didn't have the didn't have the cannons to go with it. And they st- we stop at a, at a at a rest stop, get everybody all this food. And I remember getting a giant burger and everything, and Mr. De Pasquale asked me to drive the car so that he could eat in the car. And I'm driving this. I mean, this is the guy that's deciding whether or not I'm going to play. And I wasn't one of the better players on the team. So I felt like he he was like, all right, just put the kid up there who's really nervous, the youngest one here. We'll see if he can drive my car while he's got barbecue sauce dripping down his hands and I'm trying to eat. And... That's probably the first time I ever drove on a highway. I couldn't have said no, could I? It, it would have been the best thing to do because the only other time that I've ever driven and felt scared was when I set my personal land speed record going, and it was in Montana when there was no speed limit during the daytime, going downhill uh, on a mountain, on an interstate, and I had 125 miles an hour in a Honda Accord that was not built for that, and the thing started shaking. So that was shaking, I was shaking, I was scared. The, the Continental wasn't shaking when I was driving it. I, I was shaking because I'm 15 years old. I probably shouldn't be driving, and the coach sitting next to me is, like, watching me drive. And I'm like, why are you doing this, dude? There's no reason for me to be driving that truck and, or that car, and obviously I'm a little scarred from that experience now. When you were driving your downhill uh, land record, it had been like uh, John Candy and Cool Runnings. We'd have had to check your cart for, for weights there at the bottom of it if you're setting records that fast. I thought it was going to be cool. I, I thought it was like, yeah, we're going to see how fast this thing can go. And those those Accords have room. This would have been 1998. These Accords then even had room on the speedometer to still make it, well, this thing is going to go 150 miles an hour. If it went 150 miles an hour, that car would have fallen apart, and I would have been driving like Fred Flintstone. That was, yeah, I don't know if I'll ever go that fast again. But I'm going to take a break real fast, and we're going to talk with Neil Atkinson from Bet Sarazen in just a moment on Halftime. This is Halftime. The Cal era is here. Championship Under Construction is brought to you by Limburg Real Estate Group, serving all of Northwest Arkansas, Missouri, and the River Valley. For all your real estate needs, go to LimburgTeam.com. Limburg Real Estate Group, serving all of Northwest Arkansas, Missouri, and the River Valley. For all your real estate needs, go to LimburgTeam.com. Maverick Mail Medical, your wellness and aesthetic center for men in Northwest Arkansas. Look better, live better, love better. Visit MaverickMailMedical.com. Hey, this is Dr. Charlie Liggett with River Valley Smile Center. We dial 7828940. Coach Todd Holland, head baseball coach of the University of Arkansas Fort Smith Lions. I call 7828940. Stay cool this summer with a York High Efficiency HVAC unit. Or for more information on endless hot water and high efficiency tankless water heaters, give us a call at 7828940. That's 7828940. Hello, this is Sebastian County Assessor Zach Johnson here to remind you to assess your personal property by May 31st to avoid late penalty. You can do this in person at one of our three locations, over the phone, or online by going to www.countyservice.net. I would also like to remind any current homeowners or individuals buying their homes on contract to contact our office and check on your eligibility for the Homestead Tax Credit. Contact us today to see if you qualify. The Homestead Tax Credit can save you up to $425 off of your tax bill. This ad sponsored by Sebastian County Assessor and paid for by Amendment 7. 
79. Can you explain the infield fly rule? Neither can I, but I can help you navigate a variety of legal issues from divorce to personal injury to estate planning. I'm Jackie Mock with Mock Legal Solutions, a new law firm offering affordable flat fees with payment plans available. You get an ace at the price of a minor leaguer. Now that sounds like a grand slam to me. Call Mock Legal Solutions for your free consultation, 479-769-1505. Real advice, reasonable price. The American Patriot Promotions Gun Show is coming to the Sebastian County Fairgrounds in Greenwood Saturday, May the 4th and Sunday, May the 5th. Tickets are just $10 per person, $8 for veterans, military, and active police force. Plus, children 16 and under get in free. On Saturday, the event goes from 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. and Sunday from 9 a.m. till 3 p.m. For more information, go to AmericanPatriotPromotions.com. May the 4th be with you. Precision Overhead Door features the finest quality materials, installation, and service for all of your overhead door needs. Fully licensed and insured with the largest showroom in Northwest Arkansas, located at 1907 Town West Drive in Rogers and 416 North 10th Street in Fort Smith. Give them a call today at 844-PDS-DOOR or online at precisiondoornwa.com. Financing is available. Precision Overhead Door voted Best Garage Door Company of Northwest Arkansas and the River Valley. Precision Overhead Door. Hey, it's Ty Richardson for Papa's Pub and Pizzeria. I want to talk about their pizza today. The Goob Special with extra pepperoni and rib rub on top. The Parm Special with double mushroom and jalapenos. Don't forget about the bacon cheeseburger and everyone's favorite, the old trash can. Swing on by Papa's Pub and Pizzeria at 508 Garrison Avenue in downtown Fort Smith. Or give them a call at 479-783-9941. Papa's Pub and Pizzeria, the best darn pizza in Fort Smith. Perhaps the world. Arkansas Fuel Injection in Fort Smith has been providing quality work for all new and rebuilt diesel pumps and injectors for over 25 years. They are a certified diesel shop with a team of quality technicians that ensure the highest quality worksmanship and warranties all their work. They are open Monday through Friday 8 to 5 and has emergency service available 24 hours a day. For all your diesel pump, fuel injection, and parts needs, stop by Arkansas Fuel Injection, 6300 South 29th Street, Fort Smith. Call them today at 1-800-817-7709. Arkansas Fuel injection. Your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN 953. <laughs> Any cares to hold me when I found the mountain headed upside down? Any dress and easy when I do enjoy the way he talks me now? Make sure to follow Halftime on Twitter at Hit That Line AR and on Facebook and Instagram at Hit That Line. Call or text ESPN Arkansas on the McClarty Daniel Hotline, 877-377-6963. Now back to Halftime with Phil Elson and Matt Jones. Neil Adkinson is there on the McClarty Daniel Hotline from Bet Sarazen. Arkansas's favorite sports betting app. You want to put a little wager on your favorite sporting event, SEC baseball weekend, NBA playoffs, um, NFL draft next week, all of it coming up. Got it on the uh, BetSarazen app or any web browser, BetSarazen.com. Of course, you can be an Apple user and download it from the App Store. All Android users using Google Play. Neil, great to have you here today on Halftime in the Golden Hour. How are you? Oh, I am doing fantastic, and I love being on the Golden Hour on a Friday. And I hear the weather's a little bit better there in uh, in Columbia, isn't it? Than we're having back here at home. But uh, got good baseball weather. But I hear we may have a doubleheader tomorrow. And uh, of course, I have to keep my eye on that. Make sure we have the props up and and uh, and adjust if they if they do that. But uh, keeps me on my toes, but gets me something to do on the weekends and. And looking at sports and then managing a sports book on the weekends, is it's not too bad of a gig most of the time. Yeah, they haven't made any announcement about the rest of the weekend, but uh, I, I'm just kind of I'm kind of on pins and needles waiting to hear something sometime soon because 
You know, they, they really do their best to get these games in. I want to ask about the, the odds on today's game in which you've got uh, Arkansas minus two and a half against South Carolina. Would that have been – do you think the odds would have been different if South Carolina would have pitched their ace um, in uh, Eli Jones instead of, instead of I think, the way that they're looking at it really is going with a bullpen game? We see some, some teams will do this against an ace – um, and right. I think Carolina's taken that opportunity today to change their rotation up, maybe for the future. But minus two and a half, would it have been the same if they would have thrown Jones? No, it it had been probably uh, uh, minus one and a half. The, the typical run line, like we usually have for uh, Major League Baseball, um, it, that would have been definitely one and a half. And of course, the money line uh, would have been a little bit different. Uh, the money line, you know, did jump to uh, Arkansas minus uh, two ten when they locked that in. So. Um, yeah, it, it, that the starting pitcher is the single most determining factor of of, of the betting lines uh, uh, the majority of the time. So um, yeah, that 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 would have changed that one uh, uh, to that right there. I think we got the over and under at ten and a half on this one too. So um, you know that that that's about typical for an Arkansas uh, versus an SEC uh, matchup. The, the series that'll be really interesting, I mean, for watching and I think for betting would be Tennessee and Kentucky. Because those are two really high-scoring teams playing in Kentucky. They score in way different ways. Kentucky is a contact, speed-oriented club. Uh, play the whitey ball kind that we talked about earlier in the week. And Tennessee is right. just to grip it and rip it. And I think a, I think that would get some that would get some looks too. When, when it comes to uh, college baseball, obviously the Hogs get most of the play on Bet Sarazen. But there, is there oh, yeah. is there a steady amount of action on SEC baseball? Yeah. I, the SEC, you know, without a doubt, uh, we have a lot more attention to. Um, um, it, it, we are an SEC state when it comes to betting. Uh, it's very, very unusual uh, to see a non-SEC matchup unless they're, it's the top-ranked teams out there. And, of course, it, in baseball, I mean, just about every top-ranked team is in the SEC, it seems like it. But, uh, you know, you've got the other teams that are in there. But just this time of year, people are just concentrating on the SEC. People bet what they know, and when Arkansas, when they see Arkansas plays play the other SEC teams, um, those are the ones that are that are, are are most bet because they have a point of reference, and that's what a lot of a lot of people that bet on these games do. They they, they like to compare how the different teams match up, and um, and and they bet with what they're familiar with. So SEC that dominates it, just like it does in really every other collegiate sport. I mean, and. And in, in, in basketball and in football, you know, you, if we separated the SEC, it would probably be well over 60 to 75 percent of all of our bets are on those types of matchups. So going on the idea that people bet on the things that they know or the things that they hear about, you know, this 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 um, conversation about Caitlin Clark and and how the the idea and the hope might be that her uh being drafted into the WNBA and the spotlight that goes along with her uh, can elevate that league overall. Um, now I know that that you know the WNBA season starts oh, yeah. in about a month. Are you expecting an uptick on on WNBA betting too because of Caitlin Clark? Yeah, absolutely, because of her. Um, because I mean, look at the endorsement deals. I think she just signed one with Nike. When you have a player that is of that caliber and um, going to be playing. Um, you know, with uh, with the uh, the fever, um, you know, it it gives that attention, and and we saw the viewership of the women's uh, tournament just absolutely explode, and the betting, uh, 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 it, you know, compared to last year, exploded. Now it's nowhere near the, the the betting part of it is nowhere near the level of what the men's game was, but there was a significant increase. Last year, the WNBA did not really let, get a lot of attention with us on Bet Saracen. I think that's going to be a lot different this year, and it's going to be interesting to see what the Caitlin effect is going to be uh, on that. And and I think it's really, really good to the game to have that exposure out there. And uh, the women's game is a little bit different to me than, than the men's game. I, I, you know, to me, it's a lot more fundamental. And I actually like watching it. You know, growing up in Tennessee, you know, we always had a good pre uh, good reference with, uh, with women's basketball with Pat Summit and the volunteers, you know, back in the glory days. And, uh, and, and, and women's basketball is very familiar with me, and I really do think 
you know, even with, uh, uh, you know, some of the political ramifications about who can and can't play women's sports. Uh, I, I think women's sports is getting the attention that it finally deserves, and uh, they're starting to, to do a following. And when you have athletes of that caliber uh, that, that, that are that good and, and, and have that image, it, it, it always brings attention to it, which is it's good for me because uh, the number one thing that drives business on a sports book is, uh, is, is, is fan engagement. And anything that gets the fans engaged is usually good for us as far as volumes, not always in the results, but in volumes, it's always good for us. Well, I think, you know, talking about professional basketball on the male side, um, a lot of the casual fans now start paying more attention with the start of the NBA playoffs and just coinciding with this lifetime ban for John Tay Porter for yeah. so he was giving he gave information his own health information apparently about um about his availability to some sports betters and then he was gambling on the sport himself which yeah man that's just uh I don't understand why you would why you would do that and think you can get away with it with with all of the with all of the evidence that we've had in the last year um why why how you can think you can get away with it but I guess that means some some might actually get away with it otherwise they wouldn't do it yeah, that, yeah, I bet. Yeah, there are people going to get get away with it, and but my contention is, is they're going to get away with it on the black market more than they would be on on, on the uh, on the legal regulated market. And, and and the only reason you're hearing more about this now is it's because we have so many states that are in the legal regulated market, and we have the technology and the monitoring, and um, you know we are able to identify this using our technology, using our patterns. And, and using the information that we have that, that, that we are required to, to gather on, on, to allow somebody to bet on our platforms, the reason you're hearing more about it is, is because the system is working. And, and, and it may not work. It, it, you know, we may not know exactly what happened at, at the time of the event, but there will be a trail where we'll be able to trace and determine what happened and connect the dots. And, um, and, and it's unfortunate that, that, that some people are making the decisions to, to doing what they're doing, which are clearly a violation of their league rules, a violation of the state laws where it's uh, where it is, and um, and then they're going to pay the consequences for it. And um, you don't want to see it, but then again, it's good that it's out there. It's in the news because that is going to be the deterrent for for the players that may casually do it. You know, and and in the past when we didn't have legalized betting, how much of this stuff really did go on? Because you know, we've all had head scratchers on some performances in the past. You know, I'm talking about pre-2018. And uh, and now, you know, we're able to zero in on it. And, you know, I, I want this to happen because if people do not trust the integrity of these games, um, not just for sports betting purposes, but for the viewership, you know, for the, for the uh, 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 deals with the uh, endorsements and all of that, you know, you don't see a whole lot of WWE wrestling, um, which, which you know, we all know is theatrical and, and, and of that nature. Yeah, you do have some entertainment deals, but, you know, we don't allow betting on it either, and, and, and that's the reason why. And, and, and if fans do not believe that the competition is true, they're going to stop watching, and it's going to cost the leagues a lot of money. So it's in everybody's interest to do this, and, legal aid, and legalized gambling gives us the mechanism to monitor it where illegal gambling and on the black side do not. Okay, so we, we won't have you again until the second day of the NFL draft, which starts Thursday next week, and, the, and then we'll have you on Friday. How many different props are there on Bet Sarazen for the NFL draft? Because the list I'm looking at here goes really, really <laughs> long. Yeah, uh, I'm going to start putting it on the side about Sunday after the, the weekend sports roll down. There, you need to study if you're going to be able to do that now. The money is not to be made in the first draft pick. I can tell you that. Where the money is to be made is lower down into the draft where you can go in and get some of the log odds. And it's, it, it's kind of funny, um, you know, that it is uh, the, the, the draft um, it, it is very, very, um, for us, it's kind of um, uh, scary because sometimes you can have news leak. And, and, and we, a matter of fact, I, I, I do calls with NFL security to discuss things like this and just knowing the procedures that they're put in place to lock down this information to where it does not come publicly before it's selected. And, and that's the way it's supposed to be even before we had, you know, the explosion of legalized sports gambling. But those selections, I think it's over 200 
And if you add each different selection you can make, it's more than that. And we're going to be adding some more as the week goes on. But there is, I love that menu. It's, it's fun to watch uh, and, 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 and to make some guess. And if you know what a team's needs are and, and, and where they're leaning towards, you can make some good plays and some good money. Now, I wouldn't bet the farm on it, but uh, if, if you follow a particular team or a player and you have a, have a, a good feeling of where they're going to go, there's some nice – fun money-making opportunities and uh, some decisions you can make also while you're waiting in between picks because sometimes when they uh, in between the picks and the, and the teams that are on the clock uh, you know it gets a little boring but uh, then again if you want to make a bet and see if it comes through on the next one it can be a lot of fun. Neil let's leave it there we'll, we'll reconvene second day of the NFL draft and uh, and look at what's happened in the first day and, and what fans can do for the last couple of days and everything else going on next weekend appreciate you. All right, everybody, uh, bet with your head and not over it. Check out all the NBA specials and the hockey specials. Playoffs are starting with hockey uh, this weekend also. Golf, European soccer, UFC, Formula One, and, of course, college and MLB baseball. That is Neil Atkinson from Bet Sarazen. Now let's open the McClarty Daniel hotline, and you can get on with us anytime you want up until the top of the hour, 877 877- 377 6963. The home stretch of the golden hour. We are right back. This is halftime. You can now download our new app in the iTunes or Google Play Store. Listen anytime and anywhere on your favorite mobile device. Just search Hit That Line now. Hey there, business ballers and entrepreneurs. Ready to make your financial dreams come true? Well, get ready to score big with SwishFunding.com, the slam dunk solution for all your business funding needs. Just like that satisfying swish when the ball goes in, SwishFunding.com guarantees you a seamless funding experience. Working capital, expanding your business, upgrading your equipment, or even covering payroll. If you have at least $25,000 in monthly revenue and been in business for at least one year, qualifying is easier than a layup. At Swish Funding, we fund up to $5 million in 24 hours. SwishFunding.com's team will guide you every step of the way. No more banking red tape. Just quick, decisive action to get you back in the game. Head over to SwishFunding.com and slam dunk your financial goals today. Remember, it's not just a shot in the dark. It's a surefire swish. Go to SwishFunding.com. That's S-W-I-S-H Funding.com. SwishFunding.com. You're listening to Halftime Live from the Crabtree RV Center Studios. Crabtree RV Center, where RVing is life. Let me grab my car keys and we'll roll. Are we still going to that new bar downtown? Yeah, it's supposed to be fun. Lexi, give me driving directions from home to downtown bar district. Autocorrect. Suggest Uber. Pick up. Home. Drop off downtown bar district. No, I'm driving. Suggest the metro bus. Departing in 12 minutes. Point taken, Lexi. We'll grab a ride. If you drink, don't drive. Decide to ride. Brought to you in partnership by Anheuser Busch, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, and Uber. Hi, folks. Larry Rath here for Rath Auto Resources and the Meineke Car Care Center, where it's spring cleaning time. The lot is blooming with fresh, road ready, certified inventory and weekly specials that could save you up to four thousand dollars. If you're keeping the car you have, let us take care of it for you in the Meineke Car Care Center with half off brakes and buy three get one free on all tires. Better yet, trade today and save up to four thousand dollars during spring cleaning at Rath Auto Resources and the Meineke Car Care Center, where all the happiest drivers are rolling with Rath, just north of Phoenix on Towson Fort Smith. We're back with the action. Coke Zero Sugar might be the best Coke ever? That's right, Jim. With an irresistible taste and zero sugar, Coke Zero Sugar is a must-try for any sports fan. So make sure you... Wait, Jim, I didn't mean try it right now. We're still on the air. Mmm, best Coke ever? Take a taste, Jen. Really? No, not right now, Jen. we got a game to call. Do you need an attorney that you can actually speak with? You need Hickey & Hole Law Partners. The attorneys at Hickey & Hole understand the importance of client communication and are taking the time to meet you, respond to emails, and return calls. Every case is important, and they strive to give each one the time and attention it deserves. Call today, 479-434-2414, or visit them online at kevinhickeylaw.com. Hickey & Hole Law Partners. Things are about to get better. 
When it's time for breakfast, Calico County is making it all from scratch. You got the dedicated early morning crew at Calico are cooking up and serving buttermilk pancakes, moist biscuits, rich waffles, country fried potatoes, three types of gravy, and of course, their famous cinnamon rolls and much more. They serve all of this and a lot more seven days a week until 11 a.m. Stop in, call ahead, or get it to go. Or just come by and pick up a dozen cinnamon rolls for the office. For breakfast, lunch, dinner, or catering, roll on into Calico County. They're home cooking good. Calico County, just off Rogers Avenue behind Randall Ford. Hello, friends. This is Matt Jones from Halftime. Join myself and Phil Elson as we do the show live from Lumber One in Van Buren, Friday, April 26th from 11 to 2, and we celebrate Customer Appreciation Day. Stop by, grab a dog or burger, talk Razorback sports, check out Lumber One's new showroom, and let's have a good time. That's this Friday, April 26th, Halftime Live at Lumber One, 3335 Industrial Park Road in Van Buren. Your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN 95.3. Well, I love the way you dance Oh, how you hold your face How you turn your head How you look me in the eyes My girl You're a rose pink Cadillac And I love the way you roll Sink your wild tag teeth in the neck onto the blood flows. You're listening to Halftime with Phil Elson and Matt Jones. Want to jump in the conversation? Call or text ESPN Arkansas on the McClarty Daniel Hotline, 877-377-6963. Now, here's Phil Elson and Matt Jones. A seventh Duke basketball player has entered the transfer portal. <laughs> they're not changing coaches, but they're changing they're changing players. Sean Stewart is the latest to enter the transfer portal from Duke. TJ Power went into the portal, one of the top freshmen in the country. Uh, thought Arkansas might get Jeremy Roach, but it looks like Baylor may be the front runner for him, according to some of the experts that you see out there. But uh, wow, seven Duke players. And one of the Mark Mitchell, six foot eight power forward, average over ten points a game. He is committed to Mizzou. Um, he announced that earlier today. Eight seven seven three seven seven sixty nine sixty three to get with us on the McClarty Daniel Hotline as we are here in the home stretch of the Golden Hour on a Friday. Cabbage Head is on the McClarty Daniel Hotline. What's up, Cabbage Head? How are you? Hey, Will. How are you doing, man? You. you... It sounds good, and I'm just reporting back to you that Toto and Tulsa the other day was really, really a good concert. Awesome. And, uh, I didn't even I, realize they were there, but of course Toto is going to be awesome. Well, yeah, I, I called and told you that I was going last Thursday night, and you said, man, I'd, That's I'd love right. to okay. see them. <laughs> I, 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 I depend on you to let us know when they come to the amp, because I'm sure, sure. But there's, there's some kind of lawsuit with the, the widows of the Picardo brothers, and they can't release another album. So I hope they get that lined up because, man, I tell you, that that was really a, really a good show. And it's the best. I've never been to that casino, but man, that is huge down there. Well, down I don't the know when there. they're. I don't know when they're coming to the amp. All I know is Guar is going to be in Fayetteville uh, at JJ's Live in September. So that. That's the only concert news I have for you if you want to go to a Guar show, Cabbage Head. I don't know if that's oh, your thing. Okay. okay. Well, listen, you guys were talking a while ago, and I hope I, I'm not off uh, off your subject matter. But I tell you, and of course, you and Matt probably I may or may not, but I know it's the bottom line and it's the money. But I don't think I've ever seen um, a women's pro basketball game. But it's it's just embarrassing when they give that girl seventy six thousand dollars. You know what I mean, Caitlin Clark. Yeah, I mean, I I under I I don't know how how that's figured out. 
I, I really don't because there are slots. There's a slotting system to the NBA draft. There's a slotting system to yeah. the NFL draft and to the Major League Baseball draft, too. I don't know how that's all figured out, but it has to yeah. be based somewhat on the league revenues overall or the team-by-team yeah. revenues. Yeah. Well, don't, do you think she'll make it up with the uh... – endorsements for like Nike and stuff like that maybe well, of course she will she's what is it over 20 million dollars with Nike yes i just wonder would 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 Nike have signed her to that deal while she was still at, at Iowa or did, or were they waiting for her to leave obviously they were waiting for her to leave college because they just signed her after yeah. she after the national championship game so yes i th- well, of I, course I, we'll make that back the here's the question here's the question in five years, what does the top pick in the WNBA make for a three-year contract, right? If it's a lot yeah. more than $75,000 a year, well, oh, then there's a big oh, effect God. from her. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, I sure enjoyed watching her play, and I kept up with the South Carolinas and, 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 and her. I like the kid, the girl kids that played in South Carolina. She didn't get to play a lot, but she was real good. But, but it, it, it caused a lot of... Uh, viewers to watch because of those girls and and i hope they do good and, and but but that i don't even believe i would have recorded the 76 when the guys make millions you know mm-hmm. cabbage uh, hey, it's good it's good to hear from you look i think i think part of this is so like the greatness of a south carolina is not going to draw the eyes the way that a single person can sort of you know, grab the eyes of people. Um, you know, it's like when you wanted to watch the Bulls in the 90s, when you wanted to watch the Lakers uh, with Kobe and Shaq and the greatness of the of the now fallen dynasty of the Golden State Warriors. Yeah, the greatness of it was one thing, but it was also that you were watching individual great players too who were great in their own right. Um None of the South Carolina players necessarily stand out in that way. I think Camilla Cardozo is outstanding. I mean, I'm not trying to take anything away from her, but but you've seen six foot seven centers kind of do some of the stuff that she's done before. What Clark was doing was was generational, was different. Um, it's like I I don't know. It's like the individual player seems to get more of the oohs and the ahs, and you want to watch this. Uh, than the overall team does, right? Like people tune into the Dodgers. A lot of people, the casual fan, because they want to they want to see Shohei Otani. Um, you know, I'm sure in soccer there's the same idea. Basketball is is I know it's a team sport, but man, it's the individuals that just seem to dominate it. And it it feels to me like, I mean, I how many WNBA games have I watched? I do women's college basketball on the radio. I could I've watched. None. I've not watched a WNBA game. I don't have a reason to root, um, and I haven't had the people to follow necessarily that I'm interested in. I'd, I'd be interested in watching a Caitlin Clark Indiana Fever game for no other reason than because she's on the team, and I want to see if it translates from the, from college to the pros, and I'm sure it will. I can't imagine that it's not going to. Has kind of an Allen Iverson feel to it, uh, you know. Caitlin Clark is is a little bitty thing. Allen Iverson was a little bitty thing. My favorite uh, six foot under guard, guard ever to play in the NBA is Allen Same Iverson. Here. Same here. Uh, just a freak. You wanted to watch Allen Iverson play, but th- that's the thing that's with Caitlin. She's not going to be able to take a team to a championship. Being the being, I mean, she's going to be the best player, just like Allen Iverson. You got to have that girl from South Carolina. You got to have, and you got to have some bigs. Uh, if you're going to have success, and, and and that's what I wonder about. I think she she's going to have success, no question. But when the Indiana Fever, they, if they start three and seventeen, it's going to kind of be it's going to be tough. But yeah, her shoe her shoe and endorsement deals and what she's doing for for the the game uh, from all those little third, fourth, and fifth grade girls, six that are watching her and they're loving basketball because of her. Uh, unbelievable what she's doing, for, uh, helping grow the game of basketball. Well, yeah, there's always a second, not a, like a vice star, to borrow our term for the show today, a vice star for MJ, the it's Scottie Pippen. Uh, the, I mean, the, one of the whole reasons, I guess, why Shaq and Kobe's relationship fell apart was who's the vice star amongst the two of them, you know, the Batman and Robin thing that uh, got 
not Shaq in trouble, but I think seemed to tick Kobe off. You know, Larry Bird, there was Kevin McHale, there was Robert Parrish, Magic, you had Kareem, you had, uh, you had uh, James Worthy, all these greats. It's never just the one player to do it. It's the same thing with the, with the Warriors. But I couldn't tell you who else is on the Indiana Fever roster. That's the other thing. It's like um, the entire country knows who Caitlin Clark is. Do we know the other players across the league? You know, you got to get people interested in the entire league, and and I think that's that's what the hope is, is that Clark brings that along. Uh, let's see some other things going on here. I saw Matt where the the headset communication has been has been uh, confirmed. It's been uh, okayed and approved, and so helmet communication is now a thing for college football. So we won't have any more sign stealing scandals as far as that's concerned. Uh, what else? FedEx is giving $25 million for NIL to Memphis Athletics. $5 million a year over the next five years. So that's the kind of thing that that people were expecting was happening at Arkansas because of all the corporations around. You know, Tyson Meats is not giving the money to bring Cal here or pay the assistance or anything. That's coming from a person who's named Tyson. Um, you know, Walmart might have an advertising partnership with Learfield and have their uh, their uh, their logo on the football stadium in a few places, but I don't. They're not giving to to NIL. Same with JB Hunt. I mean, there's the Hunt Collective. Hunt has its name on a bunch of things, but they're not necessarily paying into the NIL. This one to me always made sense. I mean, FedEx is right there in Memphis, and now they are literally handing. Um, $25 million for the next five years to help fund the player, the student athletes at Memphis. This is this is not going to the school. This is going to their NIL fund. That's the first time that I can remember uh, seeing something like that. Just kind of stood out a little bit. Basketball's better when Memphis is is good. It's a it's a good little rivalry too. The the Memphis Arkansas game that that'd be good to bring that one back. Didn't that die when Cal was the coach? <laughs> I thought he. I don't think I don't think he liked scheduling Arkansas when he was the Memphis coach, but now that he's back here, I'm telling you that home court advantage at Bud Walton, if that doesn't come back and just set some type of record, I, I'm I, I don't know basketball because that's that's part of the reason Cal didn't. Nobody wants to come to Bud Walton and play if Bud Walton's good. I mean that's just that's that's an automatic L. I was trying to think to myself like what other program would Cal have left for across the SEC. I mean, it wasn't there talk like he, well, the UCLA tried to flirt with him. What was that, 2019, something like that. But but if you if you're looking at the SEC and for the kind of advertisement that you give to a coach who's coaching for somebody else, be like, you know what? If you're looking for another job, this might be the place for you. Cal getting booed the way that he was booed when he was ejected for Kentucky, with Kentucky those few years ago. That's like an advertisement to come coach here in a sense. Yeah, they're booing you, but look at the kind of look at the kind of crowd that you get when when a hated rival comes in. I just kind of wonder so you got what is it a 25 game winning streak now at at uh, at Baum Walker? What kind of a winning streak could you eventually get going at Bud Walton Arena under John Calipari? They 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 lost three games in a row at Rupp this last year for the first time ever at Rupp Arena, uh, but they were always a tough team to beat at home. That had to have meant something to Cal too. You know, it's like, hey, the Arkansas job is open. My time at Kentucky has been great, but I'm not feeling too great about this <laughs> this right now. Um, you know, they might not like me very much, but that's a really great building. That's an awesome building. Those are fit. those fans show up. They sell the place out. That had to have something to do with it, doesn't it? Great atmosphere up there in Bud Walton. I mean, it's 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 first class. Uh, yeah, Jeremiah reminding us that, yeah, he didn't want to compete against Arkansas for recruiting in the Memphis area. Well, now that he's the coach at Arkansas, do you think he wants to you know, give a phone call to Penny and get the Arkansas-Memphis series reengaged? I'd be all for it. Yeah, I wonder how much longer Penny, you know, he's an alum. Uh, I'm, I'm a Penny Hardaway fan. It's a, it's a shame. Him and Grant Hill, both two guys that got hurt a little bit and still – Still played. I think Amari Stoudemire, another guy like that, that that got hurt, but still kept on going. Because uh, Penny Hardaway, Grant Hill, both would have been Hall of Famers. 
Uh, Halftime is brought to you by Crabtree RV Center in Alma, the dealership that has served the River Valley in northwest Arkansas for over 70 years. Whenever you are making your plans for the summer and you want an RV to take you around, well, they've got them over there at Crabtree RV Center. Junction of I-40 and I-49 beside the Cracker Barrel in Alma. They'll help you choose the right RV for your experience. The service and parts department is on site when you need it. Everything you need in between at Crabtree RV. CrabtreeRV.com for more info. Quick break. Back to wrap the show up and wrap up the week right after this. This is Halftime. Get 2.9% financing for 72 months on a GMC Sierra Crew Cab at Harry Robinson Buick GMC. Choose from 2.7 or 5.3 liter Sierra Crew Cabs this month and get 2.9% for 72. Or get up to $6,500 in factory rebates on select 2024 GMC Sierra trucks. Conquer with confidence in a new GMC from Harry Robinson Buick GMC. We are professional grade. Harry Robinson Buick GMC. Exit 11 off of I-540 in Fort Smith. Patriot Transport wants to thank their drivers for their hard work and dedication. The local and over-the-road drivers are essential to the Patriot Transport mission. Day in and day out, Patriot Transport drivers are on the road striving for safety and success. To the -the behind-the-scenes dispatch and office employees, Patriot Transport thanks them as well for the hard work they put in day and night. If you want to be a part of the Patriot Transport family, visit PatriotTransport.com. Patriot Transport is located in Danville, Arkansas. Who can you trust to sell your home for the most money with the least amount of drama? You need a team of agents with decades of experience, commitment, and, of course, tens of thousands in marketing. You need the Limbird Team, home of Arkansas's only instant offer program. Get a cash offer on your home in only 72 hours. Limbird Real Estate Group is the number one team in Arkansas with over $1 billion sold and voted best of the best 10 years in a row, serving all of Northwest Arkansas, Missouri, and now the River Valley. Find out more at LimbirdTeam.com. L-I-M. B-I-R-D. Are you tired of the overcrowded fitness centers? Would you like a fitness option where you can actually work out? Then let's hang out. The Hangout is Fort Smith's newest fitness facility. It has an 8,000 square foot gym, indoor tennis, pickleball, and basketball with more sports coming soon. The Hangout offers group and individual training in the gym and boasts three active tennis pros to help you grow your game. Stop in today at 5400 Gary Street or thehangoutfs.com for more information. Be a part of something different. Fitness, sports, and more. Let's hang out. At Shelter Insurance, we believe insurance should adjust to fit your needs. That's why we work with you to design an auto, home, and life insurance plan that's particular to you. Insurance that fits just right. And Shelter is known for our award-winning customer service. Satisfied customers and a plan for you. Ready to check us out? Shelter Insurance. We're your shield. We're your shelter. See Agent Randy Milam and Alma or Agent Brandon Zimmerman in Barlin. Nothing says summer fun like fishing with a Phil Bobber with the family. America's favorite floats by Phil are available in a variety of sizes and colors. These premium balsa wood floats are made by the thousands at Pradco in Fort Smith, Arkansas. They are great at detecting the slightest bites by fish and work great in tandem with crickets and red worms. Available at Walmart, Bass Pro Shops, Academy, Lurnet.com, and Tackle Shops everywhere. America's favorite floats by Phil. Brothers Roofing and Restoration, a licensed and insured local roofing contractor in Arkansas. Since his playing days for the Hogs, Brother Alexander has been on rooftops many years as an adjuster and in the past decade as a roofing contractor. He knows how to help you through the insurance process while replacing your roof using only the industry's best materials. And being a lifelong Arkansan, he'll be here to stand behind his workmanship and warranty. Call 479-353-3877 to arrange a time for Brother and his team to inspect your roof. The tailgating scene on a perfect fall day in the natural state. Pulling the hogs with 75,000 plus as the Razorbacks run through the A. And all the things you love about football game days are near. Football season tickets are now on sale for marquee matchups against Tennessee, LSU, Ole Miss, and longtime rival and new SEC foe, Texas. Slant, caught, touchdown, Arkansas. Experience game day on the hill and secure your seat and tailgating space by visiting ArkansasRazorbacks.com or by calling the hogs at 800-982-HOGS. Your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN 
Make sure to follow Halftime on Twitter at Hit That Line AR and on Facebook and Instagram at Hit That Line. Call or text ESPN Arkansas on the McClarty Daniel Hotline, 877 377 6963. Now back to Halftime with Phil Elson and Matt Jones. Matt Jones, clear your calendar for the weekend. You're not going to need to be watching any sports at all because Taylor Swift released her uh, anthology, The Torture po- Tortured Poets Department. So uh, you got your weekend planned for you here. You get two hours and 31 tracks of Tay-Tay music, which I know you've been waiting on. You probably already heard it when it came out this morning at 12 midnight. Oh, I'm in the, the Tay-Tay uh, fan club, lucky number 13. They're, they're actually four vinyls. They're, they're all made out of recycled material. They're different colors. Uh, that's the only way to listen to it. Phil, come on. You got a favorite double album? I think I brought mine up recently, which would be uh, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, which I looked at the, the length of Goodbye Yellow Brick Road by Elton John is 76 minutes. This is over 120 minutes that Tay-Tay did, 31. Like, I don't remember how many how many tracks. Was it even, did you say tracks when it was on a vinyl album? Was that the term? Uh, 31, I think it was more like 17 on, on that. I Let me take a guess at what your favorite one would be. It is Smashing Pumpkins, Melancholy, and The Great Sadness. Well, Twilight to Darkness and uh, the, the Infinite Sadness. But, yes, that was close. That is was that, the, Is that the one? Yeah, yeah. It's Billy Corgan, the Reverend Billy Corgan, uh, and he's, he's a G. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, I'd, have to, I'd have to look at it, man. But you know, I'm a, you know I'm a Smashing Pumpkins fan. I know. We play some of that stuff here on Halftime every once in a while. Well, they've made it through the week. We've made it through the week, and only one player has joined up Arkansas basketball. But now you have your vice coach, your associate head coach, Kenny Payne. Um, I can, I can, I can only imagine next week will be a little more active as far as bringing players in from the transfer portal. And I, I feel the same way about women's basketball because so far uh, there's just been Izzy Higginbottom uh, coming over from Arkansas State for the women's team. So I, I'm just expecting them. Maybe a more active week next week. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't. But uh, I do expect that there'll be baseball tonight, 6 o'clock, and still don't know about a doubleheader for tomorrow. And I also know still, Matt, I'm not going up into the into the cockpit. Whenever we take off Saturday or Sunday, I'm not going to be Henry, Hensley Bam Bam Mulins. I'm not getting anybody investigated by the FAA. Pretty good, pretty good uh, motto to live by. Breezy Airlines. Easy, breezy, lemon squeezy. And that is halftime for your Friday here at the end of the golden hour. We've got uh, the Eastside Liquor Halftime Podcast coming out very soon. Uh, Thanks to The Wolf for sitting in, and thanks to Ty Richardson for starting the show. Thanks to C-Unit, of course, and hopefully Asher's eye uh, continues to improve. Just keep that eye out of very delicate spaces, Christian. I think everything will be okay. Matt Jones, hope you have a great weekend. Um, enjoy Tay Tay's double album, and then I'll see everybody later today, five o'clock or five thirty for the the dugout show for a six o'clock first pitch, Arkansas and South Carolina. So that's halftime for your Friday. For all of those folks I just mentioned, I'm Phil. Thanks for listening. Get up, get out, and get better.